the fourth-ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Beautiful day, packed house in mid-November for a crucial game in the SEC. As you look at the SEC East, Florida kept their East hopes alive in the game you just saw. Georgia, with a win today, can punch their ticket to Atlanta to the SEC title game should they win. In the West, it's LSU's to lose. Alabama won a game and lost a quarterback. But boy, can Auburn make some noise about the college football playoff picture if they win today and continue to roll as they did a couple of years ago. Welcome, everybody. Brad Nessler with Gary Danielson. Jamie O'Donnell will join us shortly. Kind of that same feel, partner, from two years ago, a little bit. I think the same. And it's not just Auburn in this game trying to spoil Georgia or Alabama in a couple weeks. It's the fact that they believe if they win, they can still get in the playoffs. Well, you know, if you want 1,100 yards of offense and 87 points like we had last right. week with LSU and Alabama, you probably don't want to watch this It game. could <laughs> literally be a game you wouldn't even have to watch the football and have a lot of fun watching this football game. Two of the best interior lines for Georgia. They're built right across that front. Andrew Thomas, Solomon Kinley, Trey Hill, Cade Mays, Isaiah Wilson. They are huge, the backbone of that Georgia football team. But this defensive line and the two stars, number five, Derek Brown, number three, Marlon Davidson. That is where the game will be won. So close, these two old rivals, 59, 56, and eight. Georgia with a three-game lead. It was horrible weather-wise, Thursday and Friday in Auburn. Today, picture perfect. Georgia won the toss and deferred. So the Auburn Tigers will get the football first in front of their sellout crowd. Rodrigo Blankenship's got it teed up for the Dogs. And we're underway in the plains. And Auburn will go to work at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And it all starts with a quarterback. And for the first time in what seems like forever, Georgia is facing a starting quarterback. And he's the true freshman, Bo Nix. And he is sensational at home. Not so good on the road. We saw the two losses they had. The noise got to him at Florida especially. But he's a very cool customer for his age. DJ Williams will start in the backfield. At tailback with Mix. And a quick throw out in the flat to Eli Stove. And Stove with a quick 14-yard pickup. Two, year, two years ago in this game, Eli Stove had a big game on the ground. Four carries for 55 yards. That was just like a rushing play. And they go with a tempo immediately. And now it is DJ Williams. Got about four before the Georgia defense can knock him down. As we set the Auburn offense for you. A guy that we expect to have a say in this. J.J. Wilson, kind of a tight end H-back. Going to play more of a wide receiver role today for Gus Malzahn's offense. And he's in the game now. Second down and six. As Auburn quickly moves to its own 44-yard line. Empty backfield and Nick's out of the gun. Wide receiver screen in and out of the hands of Eli Stove against a Georgia defense. Got to set your feet, Bo. You got to set your feet. That's an easy throw. Here's the defensive lineup for Georgia on your screen across the front. The linebacking core, Aziz Ajalari is the guy that leads Georgia in sacks. And the back end, two great safeties in J.R. Reed and Richard LeCount. So our first third down of the day. Interesting, though, the reputation of the hurry-up kept Georgia from putting in their fast nickel defense. On third and six, Nicks the quick slant, and it's a first down. That's it. That's what he has to do. Set your feet, let it go. You go watch Bo Nix in practice, and you go, what does this guy not have? Yeah. We watched him struggle in his two games, but as Gus kept telling us, you've seen him at his worst. You'll see a different guy today. Into Georgia territory already with a first down throw at the 49. That was Wilson in motion. Nicks to throw on first down. He's going to run with it. And slides forward to about the 42. So good opening drive here in the first minute and a half. 
I've always wondered about Gus's offense without a running quarterback. Talk to him about it. He says, I have to be careful with him, though. We lost our backup quarterback, Joey Gatewood. We yeah. do not have much behind him. They don't, indeed. Cord Sandberg would be their number two quarterback. Again, the slot. Again, complete. First down, Seth Williams. So the Georgia defense that has handled so many teams with such great stats, the questions has been from us that have watched the game tapes and back to everybody else, are they that good or have they not played anyone that can test them at quarterback? You could make an argument that the two quarterbacks they faced all year that have given them a game, Kyle Trask and Ian Book, and they didn't have much help on the ground in those games. And Trask was considered the number two guy at the time yes. after Felipe Frank's injury. Here's a run all the way on the Wildcat. D.J. Williams. D.J. Williams carries on the direct shot. This is really the story of the year for Georgia this year. They have just played true freshman quarterback, backup quarterbacks, wide receiver quarterbacks, <laughs> first start quarterbacks in Tyler Powell. Okay, they really down. haven't played the guy since really Notre Dame right. game that had a, a scheduled quarterback. Next call he throws and that tried to off. get it to Wilson. See, that's the question I have. Wilson, his first game at wide receiver. He's basically been playing H-back. He's taken South Canela's spot in that slot position, but you can see the timing right there was really off. He goes out now to the top of your screen. And now let's see the Georgia defense if they can put pressure. 23 sacks Auburn's given up this year. Auburn got their last third down pick up. This one's third down and 10. Nicks wanted to throw the slant, now scrambles to try to find a receiver. Found one short of the first down is Seth Williams by about three yards. I think they're going to go for it here, though. Let's just see if they get a quick snap for Auburn. Because they have Georgia substituting, but they don't, even at a near hash. And now Auburn changes its personnel. Georgia again with some massive changes coming from the sideline. Fourth down and three. Once Auburn substituted, though, the official allowed Georgia to substitute. Georgia thinking about a blitz. And now all kinds of... Come First charge time out of the half, Georgia. Everybody a little confused there. Trying to match wits, we get a timeout. Q, the free 24-7 news network for coverage is always focused on the game. Get non-stop highlights, fantasy advice, and picks. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Gary will be on with the guys from HQ at the conclusion of our game. I wonder if, here in the first quarter. Excuse me, Brad. I wonder if uh, Gus will have second thoughts here. You know, now that it's fourth and three or four, no element of surprise. You know, two 40-yard field goals they kicked last week. This is within range. It is. 48 is his long this year, Anders Carlson. This one's going to be... From about 47. Yeah, when everything was mumble jumble, that's kind of their offense keeping Georgia off balance with the speed and tempo. But now he said, ah, second look here, let's go field goal time. Number 25. So on the 10th play of the drive, Anders Carlson from 47. Georgia still hasn't allowed an opening possession score. Georgia will take over after the missed field goal. Interesting, I was out there at practice Thursday and noticed that they line up their kicker eight yards back, and I asked Carlson why, and he said penetration up the middle, and they got penetration up the middle. Instead of, normally a team will go seven, they go eight for that extra yard of dif distance. <laughs> Might have got blocked though. So Georgia takes over, first down. Jake from DeAndre Swift in the dog's backfield from the 29. And it is DeAndre Swift, and he only got about one. K.J. Britt, a middle linebacker in on the stops. We take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineups, and it starts with number 11. 2-1 record against Auburn. You're saying, wait a minute, 
He's a junior. How do you play that many games? <laughs> they played two in within a month. The SEC championship game a couple of years ago after the regular season loss here. Here's the rest of the offense for the Dogs and Andrew Thomas and Isaiah Wilson. The two big tackles will have their hands full today with Derrick Brown and Marlon Davidson and Big Cat Bryant and that group up front for Auburn. Second and nine. And it's Swift trying to get to the corner. Run out of bounds after a short gain. It'll bring up third down against the Auburn defense. That looks like this. And a guy who's already made a tackle. He makes a lot of them behind that big front wall. K.J. Brooks for the linebacker. Georgia 47% on their third downs. And this is where Kevin Steele, coordinator for Auburn, brings in his six defensive backs. He used seven of them against LSU, but Georgia only deserves six. They're passing <laughs> We expect Georgia's first pass to the ball game from Jake Fromm. Has time, plenty of it, and had to come back to his check down, and it's DeAndre Swift who lost about three. That's the game plan. Auburn uses a three-man line. They get a fourth rusher when they bring Papo number 10, a linebacker type, to get their fourth player coming in. But man-to-man, -man, they're going to play man-to-man -man all day against the receivers from Georgia. So the first punt from Jake Camarda with Christian Tut waiting back on the other end. Beauty. Tut looks up in the sun and lets it sail. It bounces inside the 10. Can Georgia get to it? Yes, they can. At about the two-yard line. Didn't even need to get to it. It stopped right there. The long snapper got down there to down it after a 67-yard punt from Jake Camarda. The Bulldogs have Auburn. Bo Nix this week in preparation of this game, and I found myself reminding several times, this young man is just 19 years old, but he has a personality that's wise beyond his years. He's also the son of a former Auburn quarterback, and even though it's his destiny to play here, that doesn't negate the fact that he's a freshman quarterback navigating Auburn through an absolute gauntlet of a schedule. And Nix has taken his lumps away from Jordan Hare. He's been unable to eclipse 180 passing yards against top 10 teams so far, and those games were all on the road but he found a comfort and a rhythm here that is unmatched and it couldn't come at a better time guys he's going to need it from the two-yard line jamie in his own end zone to throw the slant is complete and just like that to seth williams who's got him out of trouble how about that true freshman quarterback but it's not the same one you saw or we saw games ago now he's a veteran in fact gus told us yesterday he didn't even count him as a true freshman right. anymore here he is on the ground a sidearm throw it might have been a lateral let's see it's just incomplete and they're taking a look at that i think that's the famous uh nick marshall touchdown pass against alabama years ago yeah. that changed football almost Late, late, late. Doesn't matter how many linemen are downfield. They're actually way down for Harrell. It's almost five yards downfield on that play. They just call it incomplete second down and ten. From the 13. Play action quick. Wide receiver screen. And about a two-yard gain for Eli Stove. And it brings up third and long. Dante Wyatt had that sniffed out along with Ojolari. Didn't notice that Tyson Campbell suffering all year with that turf tour is in the game starting for DJ Daniel. Daniel's been the starter lately. Now then the nickel set, but that means Stokes and Campbell are the two corners, starting corners. Will Hastings in motion across the field. Georgia jumps and gets back. I'm surprised that Auburn didn't move there. They could have got an easy five yards by just reacting to that play where the offensive line. Yeah, I would imagine Jack Driscoll would have dropped, but instead the throw on a crossing route, and this one is going nowhere, courtesy of Richard LeCount, who tackled him twice. Actually didn't get him down the first time. Fourth down. Well, I think it was a, a good decision by Gus Malton, a very safe third and long down call here. You don't want to put your quarterback in. First down throw is something different. But on third and long against his defense that rushes well, five or six defensive backs on the field, I think that's a good call on third and long. Georgia should get good field position out of this. 
Aaron Sipoff's punt. Dominique Blaylock standing back around midfield. Has to backpedal back to the 39. Nifty catch actually just to get that one. And he's run out of bounds immediately. Still good field position for Georgia on their second offensive possession. Midway through the first quarter, no score here at Auburn. And then Auburn having to punt back. Kirby Smart this week has preached composure to his team. He felt like a couple of years ago here before the SEC title game in the regular season game that they were a little too emotional. Yeah, but with this field position, let's see how aggressive they will be here. You know, they only rushed two years ago in this game for 46 yards. I wonder if they'll let Jake Fromm throw it around a little bit more. Either Jake's going to run it or James Cook's going to join him in the backfield. On first down, it will be the quick throw and a completion out to the 45 to Lawrence Cager, his favorite target. And we look back to two years ago, here's what we're talking about. Penalties like late hits. And that one on after a punt. Sony Michelle guilty of that. They fumbled the ball away. They muffed punts. Just all part of not being focused and being composed. Yeah, so. I thought they were too fired up for I the think game. So, yeah. Came in number one, you know, and need to control their emotions is what he told us on the phone last night. Hope that his team learned a lesson in that trip here two years ago. Brian Harry in the backfield for Georgia on a second down and four gets the call and gets the first down. I've said this before, but you get so wrapped up in DeAndre Swift and company, you forget how really good Brian Harry is. Yeah, and you know, these second and short is something you feel good about trying to make, but I tell you, two years, just the difference in home fields. Last year, Georgia rushed for 303 yards. Yep. Two years ago here, they rushed for 46. And by the way, they had Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle, and DeAndre Swift <laughs> for 46 yards. Yeah. Elijah Holyfield just standing on the sideline. Yes. On first down. From going to go deep. Got a man out there and get him. Dominique Blaylock. Touchdown. <laughs> 51 yards on the score. How aggressive would they allow Jake to be? Well, we've got our answer. Again, here's Blaylock. Here's the coverage right there. Playing off, outside technique, poor technique. No safety in the middle of the field. He just runs right by Tut. And inside those big guys we talked about, can they hold it and give them time? Look at that. Three or four yards of space to step up, up and throw the ball. Rodrigo Blankenship's 187th consecutive extra point is good. And Georgia strikes in a hurry 61 moving up the charts got a way to go nobody's going to catch Aaron Murray I don't think our comrade here at CBS but Jake now with 68 touchdown passes just past Eric Zire who's over in the Georgia radio booth on the all-time list and it was a pretty one even if he came back another year he'd have to have a high plus <laughs> year to catch yes. Aaron Murray that's right and for Dominique Blaylock, his fourth receiving touchdown of the year. I noticed that Derek Brown, as we look at this kickoff, went up to the official afterwards saying he was held. To take one more look at that pass protection after this kickoff. Trey Hill, who was injured a week ago, is at center. He's matched up here against Brown. Watch this. Good job by Trey Hill. He's got him. Little help from Kinley if he needs it, but he doesn't. But watch him toss him down at the end. But you know what? Derek Brown didn't know the ball was already gone by the time he threw him down. That's an excellent job by Trey Hill. You know, kid, he's dealing with a real man right yes, there. Yes, he was. Bo Nix, 7 out of 10 so far. Cam Martin with him in the backfield right now. First down for the Tigers from going 25. On balance line, this player is not eligible. He's covered up. Cam Martin gets the call for a tough two on the inside. Just to go over that rule for you, he's covered up. He's allowed to go downfield on a running play, but not a pass play. He'd be ineligible. So Martin's in for one play and back out. And Booby Whitlow, who's had some injury issues, but he's back in there healthy and not wearing a knee brace right now in the Auburn backfield on second and seven. They give it to Booby now and end around to Schwartz. Doesn't matter if you got all that speed if you get bottled up like that. And Georgia had that one 
sniffed out. I tell you, Nolan Smith, there's a thing called setting the edge. Okay, watch what Smith does here. You want to know what setting the edge means? Back in the old days, go, don't let them run around you, is what setting the edge is, and that's what Nolan Smith did, the true freshman future superstar for Georgia. And with him setting the edge, Malik Herring is a guy that cleaned up to make the tackle and force a third and 15 back at the 20. Quick throw out in the flat to Whitlow. He slips a little bit. Got back across the original line of scrimmage, and that's it. Fourth down and punting situation for the Tigers. I tell you, Richard LeCount comes up and blows up this play before it can get started. Watch LeCount, the safety. Once he reads it, it's a screen. He hits it. 4-4, four, 4-3 four, four, speed, and that allows the pursuit to come in and make the tackle. They got a couple good ones back there, they LeCount do. and J.R. They They're very aggressive, and you might want to get deep on them, but that's easier said than done. Zipos to punch. Dominic Blaylock back around the Georgia 30, the guy that caught the touchdown pass a couple of minutes ago. And he'll fair catch this one right around the 25-yard line. Spend an hour on the edge of your seat. I'm not talking about SEC football. I'm talking about a new evil this Thursday at 10, 9 Central on CBS. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jimmy Erdahl, and our CBS crew at Pat Dye Field, Jordan Harris Stadium on a brilliant mid-November day. And a crucial game here in the SEC with Georgia in front by a touchdown with just under four to go in the first quarter. Yeah, pretty good ratio they got going. The important ratio is six plays, seven points. And they've been balanced. Three passes and three runs. And there's what Gary's talking about. DeAndre Swift. Back in at tailback for Georgia from the 26. Charlie Warner, the tight end in motion. Everybody in tight. Going to be an end around though to Demetrius Robinson. Got a block. Got out to the 30 before he stood up. By Jeremiah Denson, one of the safeties. Two very good safeties for Auburn, I should say, as well. Christian Tut did the same thing last play. He's right there at outside linebacker. Watch him turn it in, help inside, safety makes the tackle. Sometimes you have to do your assignment. You want to go for that player bad, but you're better off turning it into where you know the help is. James Cook in the lineup for Georgia. And the two tight ends set. A little different looking formation for the Bulldogs here. They look a little confused, to be honest with you. Second down and six. Just got the snap off. DeAndre Swift got a first down. Out across the 35 to the 37. I'll tell you, Derek Brown, that time, he's still mad. He thinks he got held. Watch him on this play. Get split it. Get thrown back. But that crease. Again, when we talked to Kevin Steele, I said, what's the most important thing? Penetration? He goes, no. Gap. Play your gap. See, right there, Brown was in the backfield. He opened up a gap. You have to be sound in your gap technique and not get in there and want to make those plays tackle for a loss every time. Georgia with a first down at the 37 yard line. Play fake to Heron. Fromm sets up, going to go deep again. Just overshot Lawrence Cajun. Pretty good coverage by Jawaris Davis back there. I don't want to say Lawrence Cager is a possession receiver, because that's not fair. But he's not a speedster. He's more of a route runner. He's a great back shoulder catcher of the ball, but he's not going to run away from a corner. Very tough for him to get deep. You almost have to scheme him deep. And he got a little bit of a grab on his elbow there yes. at the end of the route. I don't think he had a chance for that one. No, I don't either. Second and ten. From across the middle, incomplete intended for Matt Landers that time. It will bring up third and long. What a... Since the South Carolina game, when he had three interceptions, Jake's been pretty steady. Of course, you can throw that Kentucky thing out. It was a monster. Absolutely, absolutely. 
crowd it getting is. into it. Here it is, that front three with the help of the extra rusher right here coming at an angle. Where do they put pressure? From throws the out, got it complete. Pickens has to fight for the first down, and he got it. Pickens was about a yard shy, and he wheeled around and picked it up. Well, this offensive line is only allowed five sacks, number two in the country. You know who's number one in the country? Air Force, and they don't throw. <laughs> Play action, prompt to throw again, and this one's no man's land. Cager was the closest guy. I think Marlon Davidson might have got a hand on that. Just think about that. For this type of a team, only giving up five sacks all year. Now, that's part Jake Fromm, yeah. but that's also part of that offensive line that we saw up close against Florida. They held their own that day. There was no outside rush. The two defensive ends could not make a difference for Florida, and that's the game they were most impressive, as you ask me. So far, they're off to a pretty good start in this quarter against this group. Marlon Davidson standing up to rush this time. And Brian Heron Guess who? for a three-yard loss. This is on the bottom of that tackle. It's got the ankles this time. I think it's number five. That's who I'd go with. <laughs> Watch him kind of sneak in there, split the double team, dive in, and make the tackle. Guy's going to be a very rich man next year. <laughs> yeah, he is. We asked Marlon Davidson yesterday, what do you consider your strengths and his strengths? He said, I'm more the athletic, but Derek gets double teamed all the time. I think he's a little stronger than I am. <laughs> but they were funny, those two guys. Boy, they were something together. They could they? go on TV, yes. <laughs> Third down at 12. From... Pressure this time. He's going to go down, and it's Marlon Davidson. This is Buddy. As Marlon said, Marlon's going to do what he do, and he just got the sack in Jake Fromm. <laughs> what did he say? Marlon's going to do what he do, yeah. right? That's his six-and-a-half sack of the season, doing what he do right there. <laughs> and he went over a big man, Andrew Thomas, right there. And I believe him. He's an out pretty athletic off that edge, and he showed it. So it forces a Georgia punt. Jake Camarda had a career long the last time he kicked one and dropped it down at the two-yard line, a 67-yarder. As he stands right in that strip of sunshine here at Pat Byfield. Delay a game. Delay a game on the offense. Cover penalty. It's not a nightmare penalty for Georgia right here, but I think they were trying to put Simmons in motion. He kept waiting for him to go in motion. He wouldn't go. No need to take a timeout there for Georgia. You sacrifice five yards, not a big deal. Simmons was pointing like, I ain't going in motion. <laughs> Kamara's not in the sun right now. And the kick. Fair catch taken right around the 15-yard line uh, by Christian Tut. And that's where Auburn will go back to work on offense. Tonight uh, at 7 Eastern over on CBS Sports Network, college football action continues. 17th-ranked Cincinnati Bearcats take on the USFL Bulls on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Here in the SEC, Georgia on the road leading by a touchdown in the final moments of quarter number one. All right. You try to think about what is Auburn trying to establish here. You know, they've thrown 11 passes already in the game. Do they think they can't run the ball? Because right now it's slants and nothing. Georgia's number one in the SEC in run defense. They give up about four yards there to bring the first quarter to a close. Jordan Davis on the tackle on Booby Whitlow. So it played 15. On the Plains at Jordan-Hare Stadium at the end of the first quarter with a score. Georgia Bulldogs 7, Auburn Tigers nothing will return to Auburn after this message and a word from your local station. Clark, Georgia with one explosive play, the 51-yard touchdown from Jake Fromm. And now Bo Nix backpedals for the Tigers, chased by Ojolari. He's going to have to run out of bounds at about the 21-yard line as we welcome you back to the booth. Brad and Gary, Jamie down on the field. I like what you asked me, and we don't have an answer yet. What's the identity for Auburn right now? I don't now? know, but I think their identity has to be, Ness, they're going to have to get some help running the ball. We've seen 
this Georgia team twice live against Notre Dame. Ian Book, his help, 46 yards rushing yeah. in that game. Kyle Trask had a good game, 21 yards rushing. Eventually, it was too much for either quarterback. I think that's what Auburn, I don't think they can win if they can't run the ball. And that's kind of what Missouri went through last yes. week against Georgia. They had 24 carries for only 50 yards. So running against the Georgia defense hasn't been easy for anybody. And, and I wonder if Auburn can run the ball without running their quarterback. Design runs within the offense. Aaron Zipos to punt again. And over and kick. Late fair catch call by Dominic Blaylock around the 36-yard line. Got a moment here. Let's test your knowledge with today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Which is, what's the most played matchup in college football history? We told you they've been playing this one since 1892. Is there one out there that's longer? I'm assuming it's not this one because we asked. That's right. Okay, so right? There's, a, there's the hint. That's the hint. After that, take it from there. <laughs> played at Piedmont Park in Atlanta for the first 10 years and then it was either at Auburn or Athens since. 7-0 Georgia in the oh what a spin move by DeAndre Swift. Wow. Yep. He had a game last year. Popo had a chance for him number 10 right there coming off the end. We saw Clyde Edwards Alaire do that last week for a touchdown, but that's what this guy Swift can give you. He had a career high 186 on 17 carries last year in this matchup. They fake it to him here, and Fromm comes up throwing. Good coverage. In and out of the hands of Pierce Jackson. Yeah, Javaris Davis that time. Gonna play bump and run to the outside, man-to-man -man coverage. He's matched up all the way, and he does it perfectly. Watch him in phase, and then go back and beat him to the ball. Yeah, that's picture perfect yes. play out there on the corner. Brown sets him up at the 45-yard line. Draw play to Swift. Trying to bounce it outside. DeAndre Swift. Good run. Ball out. And it goes out of bounds, luckily for Georgia. They're going to get a first down out of it. I'll tell you, Solomon Kinley that time, the onside guard meeting the guard to the area, comes out and throws a great block on the play, but that ball was fumbled. His knee was not down, and fortunate for Georgia, it goes out of bounds. There you see it flying to the sideline. We're going to move it back. And bring it back to the 49-yard line, where it's third down. They moved it back to the spot of the fumble. I'm a little confused. Maybe Gene can help us why it goes back. Meantime, Jake Fromm rolls to throw, and nobody out there. Gene territory is our rules official, Gene. Yeah, guys, when we have a fumble forward and out of bounds, we'll bring the ball back to the spot of the fumble. Uh, we don't want to give them that, that gain of yardage if it's a fumble forward out of bounds. That's why they came back to the spot of the fumble. Gene, would it have made any difference had an Auburn player touched that and then it went out of bounds? Not touched it, Brad. Um, possessed it, but not touched it. If it ends up out of bounds, uh, then you do come back to the spot of that fumble if there's been no other possessions. Okay, thanks, Gene. Meanwhile, there's a flag thrown back where Christian Tutt is the punt returner. Unless they picked it up. And they did. So fourth down. You look behind Jake Kamara. This one might get inside the 10 again. A big bounce this time, though, and Georgia can't get to it. So it's a touchback. Simmons was a little upset that Webb didn't catch it in the air and allowed it to bounce into the end zone. Georgia with a touchdown lead. Auburn with the football offensively when we come back. Throw deep. Do you try to soften up this defense, or do you just try to see if you can run the ball and help your quarterback? Interesting dilemma for Gus. 
No. It fake uh, <laughs> oh, slants man. and uh, lose a yard. Yeah, they run it right up the middle, and they run it right into Tyler Clark. Auburn's last two drives, three plays, one yard, three plays, five yards. Now they have one play for minus one yard on that one. Second down and 11 from the 19. Nick's looking to throw all the way, and there it is again, Seth Williams. <laughs> Well, that's all you got. That's all you got, right? I guess. <laughs> At least it's working a little bit. It is. I don't think you can win a game on a slant pass, but that's all they got right now. Wow. Now the pitch on the run to Whitlow. Wow. Second effort by Booby Whitlow gets the first down. What a play because Tay Crowder had that thing defended that time. Crowder comes off the edge and then forces it back inside and then a cut up just at the last second. Got it to the 30. That's what they needed. Because Crowder had that thing sniffed out. Booby makes a good cut for the first down. Four wide outs for the Knicks here on first down. They'll run it with Whitlow. And another good run by Whitlow. Almost got to the first down marker. Picked up about eight. Here's the dilemma for Auburn. They're running, but they've got two deep safeties. Right now, George is saying, we bet you can't run it, and we don't have to put a safety up there. That's the dilemma for Auburn trying to throw the ball. Devontae Wyatt, the defensive end, is the guy down for Georgia. We'll check on him when we come back. Are you buying door number one or door number two? <laughs> Not getting involved. <laughs> Second down in the yard. Schwartz with a first down. Schwartz, a guy they would love to get in some space. He is the fastest guy in football. Funny, we went out to practice and I saw Big Cat. Remember, we had his act. And I said, Big Cat, you've been working on that? He just had a big, sheepish <laughs> smile. <laughs> First down, Bob at the 44. Next straight drop, now rolls to throw and incomplete. Intended for Canella. And it was DJ Daniel over there covering for Georgia. That's the problem for Auburn. We showed you the two safeties, LeCount and J.R. Reed, number 20, are lining up about 12 yards deep and daring Auburn to run the ball. Here comes a blitz from the secondary. Nix throws complete to Hastings. And Will Hastings close to a first down. This is where Auburn likes to go fast, third and short. They're hustling up, that's for sure. Less than a yard to go. And they get the first down with Whitlow on the ground. Michael Barnett looking upset that they weren't able to stand him up and keep him from moving the chains. Well, you can see that Georgia is ready for this hurry up. They faced it Kirby for years, faced it as the defensive coordinator for Alabama. They're used to Gus's, the matchup, Kirby's defense against Gus's offense. They are ready for each other. First down for Auburn. Nick's almost looked to the sideline and didn't see the snap, and now he's going to go deep for Schwartz. And in out of his hands, Daniel got a hand in there at the last moment. Well, if you saw last week's game when LSU stole the touchdown against Stingley, excuse me, Alabama did, Auburn did the same thing. They looked to the sideline and quick snapped it and tried to get Schwartz deep. Remember the Alabama play, they tried to steal one and actually got a touchdown against Derek Stingley on the end, Devontae Smith. Same play, they looked to the sideline and quick snap it, almost got it. John Shivers in the backfield, and it's Bo Nix on a quarterback. See, that's what time. I think they got to do, right there. I don't think they have any choice. Without involving the quarterback in the run game, as you see the wraparound by Mike Horton coming in there to get the key block, I don't think they have enough rush offense to take the pressure off Bo Nix in the passing game. So third down at three here at the 10-minute mark of the second quarter. We got eight men in the box. There's the count this time. And it's a direct snap to Whitlow, and he's not going to get there. Got about a yard. 
Dottarvius Whitlow, affectionately known as Booby around here. His timeline this year, first six games was rolling pretty good. Then the knee problem. Played four snaps against LSU just out of the Wildcat as he was there. And now back to full health. This will be the quick huddle, the sugar huddle. The receivers will go quickly and then the line will go after him. Fourth down and two. Quick. It's Whitlow again. Direct snap coming. And hesitates. Tries to cut back. There's nowhere to hide. Dropped by David Marshall. Well, he was eventually dropped by David Marshall. You're right, but it was stopped dead on up front. That defensive line for Georgia took it on, and there were players all over. It could have been Olajari oh, could have had the tackle. This was defended, scouted, and stopped. Bears Stadium, our aerial coverage sponsored by State Farm, and then I'm down to Pat Dye Field and Jamie. Derek Brown returned to Auburn for his senior season, and he's having an impactful one, but you have to wonder what he's going to be able to accomplish in the NFL. Well, I talked to Rodney Garner, his D-line coach. 30 years he's been coaching defensive linemen. He told me Derek Brown is a combination of these two guys he coached at Georgia, Marcus Stroud, Richard Seymour, both both first-round draft picks in 2001, and this is the product we're getting from Derek Brown today. That's some nice company. First down, Georgia, with just over nine to go in the half. Zamir White in the backfield for Georgia with Jake Farm for the first time today. From midfield, it is Zamir White. <laughs> And he goes for about three, number three. A little bit earlier, we asked you the athletic trivia question, which was, what's the most played matchup in college football history? Minnesota and Wisconsin. The battle for Paul Bunyan's axe is the longest. And then Georgia and Auburn next in line. And right now, the 124th edition has the dogs on the road in front by a touchdown. It's Eli Wolf, the tight end H-back on the hash right here to kind of give it a tough look for this Auburn defense. They're going to throw it out in the flat the other way. Oh, Blaylock, and he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but well played by Daniel Thomas, it one was. of the captains back there at safety. We showed Richard LeCount coming up on that tackle, and this time Daniel Thomas does the same thing. You cannot give these athletes in this league space. And that time it was eaten up by Thomas. Third down and seven. Number seven back in for Georgia, DeAndre Swift. Offensive line, defensive line. Who wins? From fires in and out of the hands of Dominic Blaylock. Would have been a first down, but a nice play by Javaris Davis. Absolutely. That's a second great man-to-man -man coverage play that Davis has made in this game. Decent protection. Throws it out there. It's a good throw. Same play. They actually put the game away to Eli Wolf against Florida. The out route. And this time, defended. Kamara to punt. The seventh punt today between the two teams. Auburn's keeping their defense on the field. They're playing safe. And over end kick. Georgia sees that one go out of bounds at where? About the seven yard line? Six yard line. Ah, Another good punt. Jeez. Jake Camarda, two dandies. Yeah. <laughs> you want to pin those guys back? Kirby was going to field that. <laughs> decided not to call a fair catch. And out of bounds at the six. All right, Zook, thanks. Back at Auburn, 7 0, Georgia. And Boy, you know, all of college football right. devastated by that. You don't have yes. to be an SEC fan. Well, especially the way the two years he's had has been amazing. But I think a lot of the narrative here, I think, is backwards. They've been saying that this is going to hurt Alabama with the voters. I think Alabama remembers back to Cordell Jones for Ohio State, third-string quarterback. If Alabama comes in here and beats Auburn without Tua, they deserve to be number four. If they, that would be a more impressive thing than before. And as we remember, JT Barrett and Braxton Miller were hurt a third string quarterback. So the team has to get the credit, not just the quarterback. Well said, my friend. 
D.J. Williams out of carry. I mean, everybody thought Ohio State shouldn't have been in with Cardell Jones, and look what they did. you got to say the team deserves the nod. Whether they get it or not, you can't eliminate them just because they don't have Tua. Here's the possessions for Auburn. They missed that 47-yard field goal, and then it's been pumping for the most part. And it looked like Devontae Smith's fine, number 95 back in the game. Ojolari and Clark combined to bring Bo Nix down. Excuse me, Devontae Wyatt, number 95, back in the football game. Trying to find a way to get some rushing yards, and uh, Mr. Clark comes in there and does it in job. Tyler Clark's had a heck yes, of a first sure half. Has. Senior out of Americus, Georgia. It's funny, look at the defensive fronts for these two teams, and 75% of their defensive linemen are natives of the state of Georgia. Third down and eight. in trouble has to unload it from his own end zone surprised he double pumped it i do not know why he did not let it go adam anderson number 19 is in his face as he lets it go a little stunt from the inside adams is out there anderson's out there and the double pump is really the throwing him off and now george is going to get field position again they've had it at the 39 29 26 35 and 50 and they most likely will end up with a 50 yard line again Georgia's had one play, great field position all game. Zippos with that side wind and kick. Blaylock, tough catch, but a good one at the 38. And gets about four yards, oh, but there's a, a flag. Penalty. And a penalty, too. Field position we were guessing would be around the 50 could really be moved back to around the 30. John McDade, our referee. Haven't had a lot of penalties today between two teams that uh, come in with quite a few penalties. During the return, personal foul, illegal blindside block with targeting Ooh. on number six of the return team. There's a 15 yard penalty from another return. Correction 15 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. This play is now under video review. Number six would be Otis Reese for Georgia. There he is right in the middle of the screen. Definitely blindside and definitely wow. targeting. Yeah. That's an easy call, I think. Let's see if Gene Steratore agrees. I think what's really important, too, is the way that John McDade announced this. We have a blindside block with targeting. So after review, if they do look at this and they don't think that an indicator or something rises to the level of targeting, there will still be a foul for a blindside block. I, I agree with you, though. I think it is meeting. I think you do definitely have an indicator. You have a lowering of the head. The contact is to the head neck area. And a blindside player who, or I'm sorry, a player who is being blocked from the blindside is also defenseless by definition. So I do think that we have the elements that will allow them to confirm, at least in my opinion, to confirm a targeting in this situation. You know, Gene, it appeared to me that he, would it, this is a new rule this year, the blindside block. Targeting would have been called last year, but would this have been clipping last year? Would there, let's suppose he didn't target him. Is that in the, the blindside block, was that enough or could that have been called a clip? You know what, Gary, I don't think, because I think with a block in the back in that scenario, because it's not a clip, we're above the waist on this contact, but even for a block After in the back, video here, review, he makes contact with the, the side. The on the field of targeting is confirmed. Number six, is this qualified for the remainder of the game? That's Thank the you. end of the day Thank for Eugene. Yeah, Otis Reese. Otis Reese is not in the first line of rotation in the, in the secondary, too deep in safeties, but a special teamer. Wow, there's the man. Yeah. No! Yeah, that's a tough one. That's definitely a time to go to the locker room. And now. again, look at this ball. It's 25 yards back farther than where we speculated Georgia might get the ball. So they work offensively after the penalty at the 25-yard line and with it's really, six minutes to go in the half. And it's really their worst starting field position of the game yeah. at the 25. Brian Harrion and Jake Fromm 
in the Georgia backfield. Brian Harrion crawling his way for three or four yards. Big Cat Brian holding on for dear life, number one. I think this defense for Auburn needs a three and out to help their offense, basically. Give them some field positions so that they can call some plays and open it up a little bit. and seven from under center this time play action that one wobbled out of the hand unless that was hit by somebody had to be Derek Brown maybe <laughs> he stands up and gives it the no 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 like a DB does you know when he stops him <laughs> Derek Brown right in the middle gets in there and gets a hand on it yep match up against Kinley that's man against man there, and he gets the left paw. Derek Brown, one of the big-time recruits at Georgia, thought they were going to get playing for Auburn years ago. And the captain's out of Sugar Hill, Georgia. And the crowd is wound right now on third down and seven. From lets it fly, incomplete intended for Charlie Warner, the tight end. You really can't blame Jake Fromm. His clock in that pocket, it has to be get the ball, take a look, get rid of it. Even if it's good protection, you cannot count on that. And again, what you're seeing is what you're going to get. You know, you watch a Missouri tape last week. Missouri played man-to-man -man the whole game just like this. Second straight three and out now, and Kamara to punt. He is. Christian Tutt has to backpedal <laughs> back to the 13 or 14 yard line. So Kamara, another nice punt for Georgia. This Thursday, gather together for a special Thanksgiving episode of the Unicorn. It's your night in, all new Thursday, 8:30, 7:30 Central on CBS. Well, with 5:17 remaining in the half. We expected a little bit of a rock fight, and we got it. 7 nothing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, one big play, basically, yep. right? They, they caught the Auburn safety standing flat-footed, and Jake put it right on target, the play lock, and that's been the story of the game. One explosive play for yep. Georgia, and Gus Malzahn says we need four of those in this game to win. Hasn't gotten one so far. Man, look at that. Nice yeah. play by Monty Rice. Yes, those two inside Number linebackers. John Again, John you go back to this John Georgia John defense, and... You go, you know, where's their star? You know, they don't have one of those guys, oh, sure, first rounder. But they've got 11 guys that can play. And by the way, if you're going to do a Georgia game, you better have a big uh, scouting board because they play a <laughs> lot of guys. They rotate defense. a lot of guys in there at every position. Whitlow back in the Auburn backfield. Knicks to throw down the middle. Got it. Seth Williams on the run. Williams with a stiff arm. To the 45 yard line. It was one of their biggest plays. Well, same strategy. Get inside and you got in Stokes. Maybe their best cover player all year. And when they get one that works, they run another one fast. Pick up a 28 to the 45. Knicks wanting more. This one incomplete intended for JJ Wilson. <laughs> Boy, that hurry up sometimes you wonder how many plays you actually waste in the hurry up because that time on the slant pass, the previous play, that has been Bo Nix and that's been Auburn's best play by far in this football game. Got a finger in the face mask yep. there a little yep. bit. Yep. Second and ten. Seth Williams having a good first half with seven catches. Nix getting pressure. Ojolari tried to get him, and now Nix is going to keep it and get what he can run out of bounds. I'll tell you this, Georgia defense is so disciplined in their substitutions. They get their guys off the field fast. Big third down here for the Auburn offense. So far, three out of nine. 
Georgia brings an extra man up on the defensive front. Will Hastings in motion. And we're going to get a timeout. First charge time out of the half, Auburn. And, um, you know, what do you dial up? You, you don't want your young quarterback to make a mistake, but can you really beat Georgia being conservative? I mean, sometimes you just got to say, I'm sorry, I can't protect you. We got to call it, we got to block it, and you have to stick it in there. Seth Williams has been the number one target for Bo Nix today so far. Third and nine. Nix fires complete to short. He Sounds did. good for a first down. Did. The speed route from their slot receiver. He's got him off. Inside technique. Throws it to the outside. And Schwartz puts up both hands and gets the first down. At the 44. Now they go quickly. And it's Nix. And the keeper lost the ball. Might be Georgia. Nix had a second chance at it. But I think it slipped away. Jermaine Johnson might be on the bottom of that pile. Richard LeCount's down there, and LeCount's got the ball. Johnson's the guy that caused it. LeCount covered it. Run the quarterback, would have been successful, but just the reach out, just enough by Johnson to poke that ball loose right on the football, and that popped it out. I do not like quarterbacks carrying their ball in the non-dominant hand. They do not practice it. We saw it last week with Tua. He had it in his right arm. I think when you're a right-handed player, as a passer, keep it in your right hand. You don't practice running the ball with your non-dominant hand. Well, that just squashed an impressive march for Auburn, finally getting something going on offense, and it's a turnover. Yeah, plus, now Georgia gets the ball to start the second half. This could be the dreaded two for one. They've got 318 to work and two timeouts. Pressure on this Auburn defense. Draw play, DeAndre Swift. Little hesitation, and Britt brings him down after the pickup of a couple. They cannot, this defense cannot allow this game to get out of hand right now. They know their offense is going to struggle to get the 20 points. And they don't want Georgia to get the 14 by halftime. Exactly. Jake Fromm will be under center on second down and eight. Charlie Warner, the tight end, moves into the slot on the right. It's Swift. Tough three more. You know, on the other side of the page here for Georgia, even getting a, a long field goal attempt, make it 10 nothing is big for Georgia. In a, in a scoring game where your defense is handling the Auburn offense, you get it more than one score, you start to feel good. Now you were talking about what do you do with Bo Nix when you got a guy that is in his 38th straight start at quarterback. Unleash Jake Fromm. You got him. Oh, yeah, you trust Jake Fromm. There's no doubt about that. Third and five, it'll be Jake, all by his lonesome in the Georgia backfield. From throws, almost picked off. Nice play by Javaris Davis. Wow, number three for 13. Javaris Davis does a wonderful, he takes the chance. He undercuts the throw. Get in there, get it, and go for it. He didn't worry about the tackle. He had a running back, by the way. That time he felt confident having Harry in instead of a wide receiver. He didn't take a half step back. I actually thought Swift on the other side had a better matchup. I'm surprised that on that play from when with that matchup, that was not a good matchup. So Auburn got the stop it needed. Three straight three and outs for Georgia. Javars Davis came in with four pass breakups on the year. He's got three in this half, as Gary just said. He's been around a while. 34th start I for think, him. You know, Brad, I think that's why uh, Kirby was talking to Jake, going, why did you choose Harrion on their corner? That was a bad choice, as the officials call in both sides to warn him about something. Getting a little bit too chippy, I guess. Camarda has been the special team player of the game so far with his punting. And I think Georgia's got a false start by their punt protection or somebody. There's a flag down. 
False start. 41. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. The end of that third down play. Here's what was going on. Okay, and that's why they pulled the two teams together. Cade Mays on that one in the middle of it. Everybody pushing everybody. Isaiah Wilson. And now we got more whistles. Play game, offense. Snapping the ball prior, it was made, ready to, uh, prior to being made ready to play. It's a five-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, I guess the center official wasn't out of the way yet. Georgia may never get this punt off the way this thing's going. Yeah. I think Kirby's saying he'd left the center. How does the center know once the official left him, why can't he snap it? He's not going to get the five yards back. Now Georgia comes up to the line, and Camarda's way back inside his own 20. That was almost uh, Auburn's best drive. Well, fielded at the six-yard line by Tuck. Coming back the other way. Christian Tuck knocked out of bounds, but a good return. He got it out around the 27 or 28-yard line. Just trying to see the mechanics of what happened on the second. They called the delay a game because it was snapped too soon. Let's see what happens. The official's there. Georgia comes up. He backs off. I don't know why you can't snap it. That's what Kirby's wanting to know. Why can't you snap it? At any rate, Georgia had to kick it away. And Auburn's now got an opportunity with two timeouts and a minute 40 to go. This is where I think, you, you know, for if you're Auburn, you don't want to make a mistake like Alabama made at the end of the half right here. Get a screen pass, get something safe, get it up a little bit farther. Nix looking right all the way, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Will Hastings. Brings up second and ten. That was another good throw by Bo right there to the outside. Matched up to the outside on a safety. Could have had it. And then they got J.J. Wilson, the big receiver, slotted to the left side there. On second and ten. Nick's wanting to throw right, goes that way, but it's too far in front of Seth Williams. Incomplete. Coming up, Adam, Kevin Carter, and B.J. will have first half analysis, scores, and highlights on the Geico halftime report. Zook and the guys will have more on Tua Tagovailoa, what they know and what they've heard on his injury today. I think the, the crowd is reacting to whether he caught this ball or not. Will there be a replay? We've got a big enough screen to look at it. <laughs> the fans do. One of the biggest ones in the conference. Absolutely, here at the stadium. Third down at 10. Georgia sneaking up there where they bring an extra rusher. They do off the corner. Throws a screen to Schwartz. I think they're going to have a replay on this or Gus called timeout before the snap. Prior to the snap, replay was initiated from the replay booth. Could have probably done that a little quicker, guys. Yep. Catches it, then puts it in one hand, and he bobbles it. To me, he double catches it. Well, First I, look. Kirby Smart me. is right there, and you see Kirby going like this with the bobble. One. That's not in his possession right there. And double catch. No, that is not going to be a catch. That's Kirby right there in front of Seth Williams, and yep. he'll go, no, no, no. And that's a defensive back look right there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> he, he played safety for a long time for Georgia. <laughs> Kirby's over there going, I don't care when I was all SEC in 98. Right. It's the same kind of call there. You've got to catch the ball. But they're still taking a look at it. He has a look of shock on his face right now. Catches it, then re-catches it and never really establishes his feet. And to me, that's what I see. By the, that time, his left foot's about two feet out of bounds, it appeared. The problem that Kirby's talking to the referee about is because the play was stopped, Georgia had stopped the wide receiver screen. It was not going to make the first down. They had stopped it. The, the 22 guys on the field. After video review, the ruling of the incomplete pass to the sideline is confirmed. 
Can the game clock operator please restore the game clock to 130, 130? See, Kirby's going, there was no need to stop it there. It was obvious and complete, and we had stopped the play. Now we have to stop them again. All right, and it's going to be third down to try to stop them again with a minute and a half to go in the half. Well, Gonzalez is in that spot he was last time when we ran the quick out to the sideline, but this time it's an outside technique instead of an inside technique by Webb. Third and ten from the 29. Next quick throw, too high. Is it picked up by Daniel? I think it skipped. And it did, but Georgia gets the stop. Yeah, that's the disaster play for your Auburn right there. You make a mistake down this side of the field, this this game could go to 14 easily. Overthrow and skips off the ground. Yep, one hopper. So, zip offs to putt again. Still plenty of time and two timeouts left. Snap, got it away. Good kick. Fair catch way back around the 19-yard line by Dominic Blaylock. So Georgia with 119 to go in the half. And now we're going to do Project Smarter presented by the Home Depot. Turn it back inside. It's one of the first things you learn when you're on defense. Know where your help is. And when someone's trying to get around the edge, you've got eight or nine guys inside. If you could just remember this one thing. Turn it to where you got help, and that's what this Georgia defense has done this game. And on a quick snap, they were ready for this. This was scouted and defeated. And Good a 13 scouting. yard loss right there. Absolutely. Good scouting, and they were ready for that play. Let's see if Georgia plays it conservatively or not from inside their own 20. I wonder if they could get a little screen pass to Swift and give them some space yeah, here. They haven't really got them in space yet. Yeah. Or he hasn't gotten himself in space on the ground game. He'll try here. And got almost five. Aaron Davidson on the tackle, big number three. It's funny to watch that defensive front, Davidson, number three, and Brown, number five, and Big Cat Bryant, number one. All those 300-pounders wearing <laughs> single digits. 112 remaining first half, Georgia 7-0. All important one we're watching right now Georgia if they can win here today at Auburn clinches the SEC East let me go on record because it cried out turn I would I'm surprised Auburn took a timeout here I would have just let Georgia do what they want this could turn into a something bad here's a pitch the Andre Swift swept into the secondary this time out to the 40. I think it's too much of a gamble a field goal is so big in this part of the game I would have let Georgia make the decision I didn't want to stop the clock if I'm Auburn DeAndre Swift's best run of the day 16 yard pick up to the 40 and I found him looking to throw and hit the knee I think of his intended receiver Kyrus Jackson and penalty it's going to be interference uh, pass interference on McCreary yep Got well, his jersey, is. yes, easy call. Pass interference, number 23, the defense. The penalty places this ball at the spot of the foul with automatic first down. Right, here's the gamble that Gus made. He thought he could get a three and out again. Okay, so now he gives Georgia, with time to go still in this game, a minute and two timeouts. And they can run good, anything they want. And a pretty good kicker. Yes. One minute. The landing of the half. Dogs from their own 47 from throws complete out of bounds. Kyrus Jackson, same guy, same target this time, a catch. Well, Kyrus Jackson was injured earlier with a hand injury, has come back now, and they seem to have found a matchup they like over there with McCreary. Short side of the field, he plays boundary corner, that's where he lines up. They're going away from number 13 Davis, they're going at McCreary. Drop play. DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift is Swift and almost took it. There's this patented move, too, when he breaks the line of scrimmage. He aggressively goes to his right and then plants that foot and cuts. He's as good as there is at it. Right there. 
barely touched. Georgia in the red zone now, knocking on the door after a 26-yard carry by Swift. From out wide side completes Demetrius Robertson. Well, just think if Gus had not taken a timeout, there still could be, you know, eight, ten seconds. Now there's plenty of time. And he's going to take another one right yeah, I don't here. blame him now. His defense is gassed right now. It doesn't make any difference. He needs those defensive linemen to be ready to go and get a sack here. A timeout with 32 seconds remaining. The two big fellas, you can see him breathing heavy, as Gary said. And the line of scrimmage now is the eight-yard line. Georgia still with two timeouts. If nothing else, they've got Rodrigo Blankenship. Who's a weapon as a kicker, 19 out of 22 on the year. But right now they would love to get a touchdown. And Auburn trying to prevent that. And there's Hot Rod warming up on the sideline. That last run by DeAndre Swift. Part of back-to-back -back runs that netted in 42 yards. He needs that defensive line to win a play here. Boy, he rests them and then takes out Marlon Davis. He's confused. Marlon ran to the sideline, so he got more tired running back than playing. He's very upset on the sideline that he's not in the game. Second down at four at the eight. Brian Harrion with Fromm in the Georgia backfield. They, they can run the ball here. Two timeouts left. Demetrius Robertson in motion. Fromm going to throw it to Harrion on the corner. Close to a first down. I don't think he got it, though. This whole drive, except for the swift run right up the middle, the whole drive have been into the short side of the field. They've gone from the left hash all the way down the field. We got somebody hurt on the sideline, and that's not a good sign, as Harrion was knocked out of bounds. And so we sort of hold our breath for a different reason. Yeah, Marlon's going, I'm back in the game. I think K.J. Britt was the guy who was over there on the tackle. I wonder if he's the one that got injured on the play. Number 33 right here. No, it's a, it's a person it a on person? the sideline. I got yeah. you, sorry. And Britt gets up. He's fine. Oh. Harrion's fine. And the person that Harrion ran into is not <laughs> It's not. Fine. Meanwhile, it's third down and one. Looks like a guy taking a, a picture with his camera right here is the one he runs into right over. I think it's a young lady, as is it? in fact. But Ooh. well, we can't speculate. There's too many people around right now. But, but you can see the look on the fans' faces as uh, a lot and, of concern. And, Let's bring in Jamie. Yeah, it's a painful quiet down here right now, guys. Uh, this young woman is a photographer, and. Um, I haven't seen her move her extremities since she got hit, so they're working the stretcher out right now. Oh, boy. Just like everybody else here, just trying to do her job and uh, uh, look at concern as we are up here. And that's the student section, which is right there yeah. in front of the play. Mm -hmm. So they saw it right in front of them. We don't want to speculate at all on the injury. We don't know the young lady's name. We uh, go back down to Jamie. Maybe Jamie knows more. She's still um, knocked unconscious, guys. She hasn't opened her eyes. Um, they're putting the neck brace on her right now, treating mm. her very cautiously. I'll try to find out what publication she's shooting for. that are checking on her as they rock her onto this board, but it's good news that she has woken up. Ness, did it look to you like she had the camera shooting pictures as she got run over? I, I don't know if she was shooting a picture of Brian Herring no, coming out of bounds or taking a picture of somebody else. Exactly. The, but you're so vulnerable down there, and we've seen that happen with cameramen before. We had one of our guys two or three weeks ago uh, that was injured on the sideline because you're there doing your job and doing your thing and uh, Again there is she you can see the camera up she tried yeah. to avoid right Brian at, the last, at the last second yeah. but Brian's leg hit her on the way by 
And so the medical personnel, as Jamie said, are being very, very cautious here. To try to get her to it was like Harry. she saw Brian Harrion and he saw her and he tried to skip by her and as he tried to get by her his knee hit her right in the head area. Funny how you go from a football game and think yeah. it's important yeah, I'm to I'm talking about that, the left hash. Yeah, basically. exactly. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're talking about something way well, more important. Yeah, I mean in you know, you're looking at the clock, you're looking at the next play, you're thinking they might got to hurry up, and then you go, oh, my God. Yeah. Both teams, meanwhile, are waiting out there at uh, the five-yard line, roughly. And looks like they're going to allow play to resume. And you do see her eyes open now, blinking her eyes a little bit if you caught that. Sure, a very scared young lady as well as we are for her. And now the Auburn players are trying to get the fans back into it with them backed up to their own five yard line. And we'll find out if we can find out anything further. Obviously, we will let you know. Jamie might have a little bit more right now. Guys, this young woman is a Georgia student photographer who came from Athens. So she's got a Bruise on her right eye as she's getting wheeled out of the stadium. We'll try to find out where they're going to send her. Meanwhile, back to the five-yard line, third down and one. Georgia now shifts and puts Wolf in the backfield with Herring. Fromm under center. Play fake. Fromm's going to loft it to Herring. Brian Herring. Touchdown, Georgia. Five-yard scoring toss, and Georgia does get a touchdown before halftime. Well, Auburn stopped them once, but then they got the ball back too quickly. Gus Malzahn calls a timeout, and that timeout allows Georgia to do whatever they want. They could throw the ball short, they could run the ball, and it was too much for this defense, and that changes a lot. You just wonder if Gus, knowing that Georgia was getting the ball to start the second half, he tried to steal a possession, yeah. and it might have cost him big time. Rodrigo Blackenship in for the point after. Up and good. So Brian Herring, who on the previous play injured a photographer, and I'm sure he felt terrible. He's feeling a little bit... Less than a minute, Gary, to go 81 yards in seven plays. And you see the smile on Brian Herring, his first receiving touchdown of the year, has given Georgia a two-touchdown lead. Everything was to the short side of the field. Everything went to the matchup they wanted. They wanted to go against Roger McCreary. But the two plays, the pitch play to Swift, and then the long run up the middle to Swift, I thought were the key plays of the yep. drive. Jake Fromm. Only 9 out of 18 for 91 yards, but two of them are touchdowns. One a 51-yarder and one a 5-yarder a moment ago. And Ibnogany will just watch Blackenship's kickoff go out the back of the end zone. And during that last time out, you can see the head coach at Auburn knowing that his team's in a little bit of trouble right now, just before halftime. Yeah, I mean, I, I know what's going through his head. You know, he's having a tough time scoring. George is going to get the ball again. He's trying to think, I got to I gotta figure out a way to steal points here, but it, I think it backfired on him. And again, we mentioned it earlier. He said we need four explosive plays to win the game. They don't have one yet. 20 seconds in the half. And a draw play to D.J. Williams. Williams goes for about five. And that might be, that will be it for the first half. Second down five. A frustrated fan base, I'm sure, a little bit right now. Going to head to the locker room, trailing fourth-ranked Georgia by two touchdowns. Jake Fromm, two scoring tosses through two quarters. And Kirby Smart's defense has done a remarkable job again through a half of play. Check in with Jamie. 
Coach, why do you call the timeout, the first one in that last series? Yeah, we were trying to get the ball back. And, of course, they went down and scored. And, um, you know, that was a tough one. Why so discombobulated on offense? Where's the disconnect? Well, you know, we, we just got to get some running. We got to run the football. Um, you know, they give them credit. We're a good defense. But we'll come out in the second half. We'll run the football and get some play action going. Coach, thanks. thanks. Their top rusher at halftime is their quarterback with 20 yards. That's not going to do it against a Georgia defense that's number one in the conference against the run. End of the first half, 14 nothing. The dogs out in front as we had to enter. Yeah, Brad, uh, she is Chamberlain Smith. She was taken to East Alabama Medical Center just up the road in Opelika, Alabama. As you saw, she was awake. She had a bruise on that right eye as she was taken immediately to the hospital. Uh, one of her colleagues went with her. She is an intern for the Georgia Athletic Department working with sports communications. I just spoke with head coach Kirby Smart, checked with him about Brian Harrion as he was the player that made contact with her. He was pretty upset in the locker room. He got together with Jake Fromm and they said a little prayer for her as we all do, I'm sure. Exactly. Well, Chamberlain, we know you're not watching this, but we sure hope you're okay. And back to football, a half to go here and a half for Auburn to try to get something in gear. used to it. Things happen fast on that sideline. No doubt about it. So Georgia to get the ball first, and the aforementioned Brian Herring, one of the guys back for the dogs. And he'll let this one go in the corner of the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. Welcome back to the booth. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson. A partner going to the break. Uh, Gus Malzahn told Jamie, we got to run the football. Right. Right, they got to get somebody other than their quarterback to run. Right. And you made the point that most of their running yard yards have come from Bo Nix. I don't know if they're going to have that choice. I think they just might have to drop back 25 more times. They threw 25 in the first half. I don't see how they're going to run enough yards to get this game that way. Especially with Georgia and with that two touchdown. I, I think they need to throw some deep 50-50 balls and try to get a big play. So Georgia starts at the 25. The Andre Swift behind Jake Fromm. And before they do that, they better not let Georgia score any more points. Exactly. Pierre's Jackson goes up to the top of the screen. The throw is to Demetrius Robertson on a wide-out screen going nowhere. <laughs> nice job by Jeremiah Denson to make the tackle. First half game trends. Jake Fromm, only 91 yards, but two of them are touchdowns. 51 and 5. Bo Nix passing and rushing has been the majority of the Auburn offense. And DeAndre Swift has gone over 1,000 yards rushing on the season with those two carries on that last drive that were the majority of that drive before the touchdown pass. Second and nine, and here is DeAndre Swift out to the 31. Vincent again in on the tackle. You run behind that mass of humanity. This time it'll be Thomas and Kinley. Tackle and guard, boom, they get it off the line of scrimmage and then fit the linebacker. You get those big guys rolling up there and just taking positive yards. Well, that front group averages 6'5", 328. And it gets to be third and manageable. Auburn defense would love a stop to open the third quarter. In modern college football, DeAndre Swift is going to be the widest guy on the field now. Third and four. Brown looking the other way. The throw is knocked away by Roger McCreary. They picked on him a couple of times, but that time he was equal to the task. You really can't blame him for going back there, right? You got to say, let's see if you can stop it. It's got D. Robertson. Holds him a bit, but makes the play. Might have got, might have got a little face. Yeah, mask well, there. I thought he grabbed his arm a little bit, but he got away with it. So, Auburn got what they needed. Three and out. Jake Kamar to the punt. That's Christian Tuck. Back at the 20-yard line for Auburn. Got a little bump on Kamara after the punt, but no flag. And that one sails out of bounds. Well, you might as well rush him because if you give him time, he's been killing you. Yeah, him. not had good field position today. This is their best starting field position at the 35-yard line. When are they going to throw a deep ball in this game? Are they going to throw one 30, 40 yards and try to get a jump ball or something? Nix throws the slant again. That's been their bread and butter, and Seth Williams has been the guy that he's thrown most of them to. That's been their bread, butter, dessert, coffee. <laughs> 
Those are those two last things are yours. <laughs> Coffee and dessert. <laughs> You just try to get the rest of the meal yes, out of the way so you can have exactly dessert. Right. Second down to three. E.J. Williams carrying Monty Rice for a yard, but comes up short. And it'll be third down. And the last time Auburn came back from 14-plus down, 2010 at Alabama, there was a pretty special player yeah, in that one. That was the cam, cam master at Alabama. The cam back. Yep. Third and one. Nick's going to throw on the run to Schwartz, and he got just enough. And you're saying, you know, the more you watch this Georgia defense, the more you say, boy, what don't they do well? Yeah. I mean, they tackle well, they pursue, they're tough up the middle, they play nine defensive inside tackles, nose tackles, they stay fresh. Man, they are a solid defense. First down at the 46. Williams straight up the middle. And again, he's carrying Monty Rice with him. DJ Williams getting a little warmed up, the freshman. DJ, the first time we really saw him pop as you're watching, look at the numbers for the Georgia D was that long run against LSU. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. As you see, Georgia's good in just about every category nationally. And obviously leading the SEC. And overall defense and run defense. And the question was, as we talked earlier, was it because they didn't play elite talent, no quarterbacks? But you can see, whoever they play is going to be a, a tussle with this defense. They run too well. Second and three, number three for the first down, D.J. Williams. So now they're back in that territory when they were when Bo Nix had the fumble. Maybe the key play for Auburn's offense in the first half. You're almost wondering with 14 nothing right now. Does you know do you, you got to get you have to put some points on the board? I think if it's anything less than fourth and three, you know Gus will say, "Do I go for it?" But the last time he tried it, he what he was 13 yards on yeah, the play. Yeah, Georgia was a little discombobulated defensively on who should and should not be on the field. And on first down, it's Williams just for a yard. Jermaine Johnson in on that stop. Along with Devontae Wyatt again. Well, we've got nine guys that line up inside and they just two gap you. They push, they kind of, they almost like bench press the guy in front of them. They just keep them, stand them up, look on both sides, you know, from Clark to Wyatt to Carter to Jordan Davis, Trayvon Walker. I mean, they're all over. They just keep rotating them and they're all fresh. Two yards a pop is all for the Auburn ground game. Booby Whitlow back in there. On second down and nine. Knicks quarterback draw all the way. Whitlow trying to throw him a block and he goes down around the 37. Nicobe Dean, freshman linebacker, helped keep yeah, him there. Another one of those uh, five star young players that's getting more and more action. The last three games he's at 11 tackles. He's kind of ruining his time on the field. Nolan Smith, another freshman linebacker that's highly thought of in that Georgia rotation. I gotta believe as you're calling this play, you're thinking I got two shots for this first down. Yeah. A quick wide on screen to Williams. Boy, Georgia's all over it. It wasn't accurate enough. By the time he jumped for it, by the time he came down, DJ Daniel made the play. You, when you're gonna run that wide receiver screen on short yardage, you have to hit it so he's running. And he did not. The jump slowed him down and allowed DJ to make the tackle. DJ Daniel, 4-4 closing speed there. It didn't take long for him to get out sure. and make the tackle. And then J.R. Reed and Zach Canella got a little bit tangled up there. And it's fourth down, and they're going to have to kick. Yeah, the, the loss of yardage there made the decision easy. Zipos with the boots. And this one's going out inside the five. Nice kick at the two-yard line. So earlier it was Camarda that did it to Auburn at the two. Auburn returns the favor with Georgia offensive. The things you find out, you know. <laughs> we never knew that about her. That's back-to-back. -back. Halloween costume a couple weeks yeah. ago. And now I don't know. She's getting more airtime than we are. That's right. First down, Georgia, their worst starting field position at the two-yard line. Got to be careful down there. And Fromm is under center with Harrion behind him. 
little bit hard to hear as well. Herring in the middle of the pile might have gotten two. Amazon Music brings you today's scholar athletes. DeAndre Swift, who went over the 1,000 yards today on the season. And Tanner Dean for Auburn. Amazon Music showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating $1,000 to Georgia and Auburn's general scholarship fund. Arian stays in there. DeAndre stays on the sideline. Three wideouts, including George Pickens. It's Herring again, though, and they are playing it conservatively. No game might have gotten a half yard out of it. And again, Marlon Davidson in that big front. Derek Brown saying, uh-uh. Not this time, at least. <laughs> I don't know how you can play so hard against all those big guys and have a smile on your face the whole game. <laughs> he played off two blockers, maybe three, and made the tackle. And come up smiling. I just always think back to... Alabama and A.J. McCurran from this end zone throw in 2013, I think, throwing a 99-yard touchdown pass in this game. Jake Fromm in the gun, standing at his own goal line. Third down and seven. Fromm rolling right. Has to throw it before he wants to, and it's incomplete. And Jake hit the deck, too, at the end of the play. Chandler Wooten got there. And Tell now Camarda really does have to have a good point. He does. And this is defended well. Jake tries to come outside. Almost a double slip down that time by, by, by Blaylock. And now Camarda is standing almost at his own end line. Handles the snap well. Great punt. Outside the numbers again. Tuck's got a chance to return this though from the 36. And Georgia's coverage is pretty good. Sure it was. Channing Tindall made the stop. So Auburn's got good field position to work again. And their offense gets something going. Well, we'll stay right here for a second. We got a flag down. Right about where he caught the football. Our side judge's hat is somewhere else, so he planted that for a reason as well. Yes, one of the uh, Georgia players went out of bounds on the play, trying to cover After the After the play was over, personal foul and necessary roughness. Number 87 of the kicking team. This is a 15-yard penalty. First down. Timeout. Tyler Simmons, so the field position went from good to great for Auburn. Midway point, third quarter. Auburn will have a great spot to start from when we come back. So Tyler Simmons, one of five penalties against Georgia today, all on special teams. Can you believe that? Well, no. Until <laughs> you said it. Well, you know what? They started the ball last. They punted from the 39, and they got it back at the 43. That's a pretty good exchange. Sure is. Schwartz in motion. They fake it to him. Nick's finally going to throw deep. And Williams is out of bounds. Yeah, you got to keep it on the field. And that's your ball to Seth Williams, where most of the time it's a 50 50 ball. Seth Williams is the guy that caught the pass against Oregon. Yep. But you got to give him a chance to catch it in bounds. Well, it was pretty good coverage by Eric Stokes, anyway, right there with him. And Ten. Bo knows. <laughs> yeah, Bo knows, but. In that situation, you keep it on the field. I don't even think it's 50-50. It's, you know, 70-30 advantage offense. E.J. Williams back in the Auburn backfield. He's had some nice runs so far today. Second and 10 here from the 43. And now they're going back the other way to Williams. Incomplete. And Tyson Campbell covering. Fans booing, wanting an interference on Tyson Campbell. In phase, in phase. I didn't see much, I gotta be honest. He, he didn't grab him, he had his hands on him. A little hand fighting. But yes, but did not turn him. Third and ten. Is Auburn gonna waste the good field position if they don't pick up a first down here? Here comes the pressure, Nick felt it. And from behind he goes down. The man that brought the heat stayed with it, Tyreek Stevenson. Tyreek Stevens is now Stevenson is one of those hybrid nickel players that comes in. 
comes from the secondary. He blitz. As Ness said, he fall. He saw him first, and he avoids him. He said he feels him, but he doesn't feel him the second time, does he? He's very fortunate he didn't fumble the ball. That is some stick to itiveness right there for number seven, and it'll force a punt. He's one of those guys where you look at the nickel package, you go, okay, where does seven play? It's like, there's like, you know, 11 guys that come in in different situations that aren't starters. Zipoff punt. High hanger. Layoff. Let's it go, fakes the catch, and it goes out of bounds around the 12 or 13 yard line on the far side. Well, he doesn't like that one as good as his previous attempts. Love it when somebody comes up with a big play on defense. The dogs did there. Game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Just see, feels so different than last touchdown before the half. This was, you know, exchange of punts, field position, 7 nothing. you're gripping, okay? 14 nothing. just feels like Georgia can say, okay, you know, we'll do this. Yeah. You know, until you show us you can move the ball, why should we take chances? A little better field position than last time for the Bulldogs at their own 12-yard line. Demetrius Robertson in motion. DeAndre Swift with the handle. Dives forward for a couple as we check in with Jamie. Well, coaching trees always connect players and coaches as they move through the ranks. Well, there's a connection between Bo Nix and Jake Fromm, and it goes all the way up to Bo Nix's grandfather, Conrad. He coached Jake Fromm's high school coach, and they worked together. And I went to speak with this gentleman before the game. I said, what is it that these two have that brings them together? He said, they both have that it factor, and I know we see that when we meet with them. And they've gotten together a few times, just throw the football in the backyard. The Andres went for the first down run. Yeah. Two plays for a first down. Trying to keep the good field position in here. You're trying to keep this in position so your offense can get back in the game. Derek Brown taking this, at least the start of this series off to get him some rest. They've been out there a lot. Georgia taking its time. As we approach five and a half minutes in the third quarter. As Gary said, no rush and you don't have to do anything big, especially if you can keep it on the ground. And keep moving the chains. That's what they're trying to do here. Top sweep. DeAndre Swift only got about a yard that time. DeAndre Swift, as we mentioned, over a thousand yards, back-to-back -back seasons. That's some pretty good company. The other guys that have done that are the annals of Georgia rushing yeah, history. Good names. Yeah, Herschel tops the list. Three for three for Herschel. Three years, three gigantic years. And he's at 98, so almost 100 for Swift on top of that thousand for the season. Harrion's in there in his spot right now. Second down and nine, it is. Brian Harrion trying to get it wide. Davidson trying to track him down and can't. Well, he'll make the tackle, but not before he got to the 40-yard line. Got to get a horse collar, in the world. I think. Yes, it is. And exactly. Was shaking up. And that's how I broke my ankle with a horse collar. Somebody comes Personal in, foul. They pull you back. They Legal foul. horse collar tackle of number three in the defense. This is 15-yard penalty. It forced from the end of the run. Very, Automatic first down. Very dangerous play because they stopped the runner's momentum, but the defender actually gets a boost on the play. I broke my uh, ankle on a play. I wasn't going this fast, but it was just this kind of play. Watch him fall on him from behind. Get your ankle trapped. That's exactly how it happened. Man, he got both of them trapped. I'm not even sure which one is the problem, but Brian Arian, who's valuable, very valuable to this Georgia offense, is the man that's down. Brian Harrion zipped inside that Georgia observation injury tent. Marlon Davidson, meanwhile, on the sideline. Looks like he re-hurt his back. See him getting a little massage there. So both he and Harrion on that tackle injured. Meanwhile, Georgia's at the 45-yard line of Auburn They've with a first down. Four straight runs. You get the feeling the play-action pass is coming. Zamir White is in in the backfield. We'll get the carry for a couple. And again, when you talk Number about the Georgia Zemir backfield and Harriet being a key part of it behind DeAndre Swift as you take another look at that tackle oh. by Davidson and an ugly landing by Brian Harriet. The good thing for Georgia is they do have depth at tailback, including Zamir White and James Cook. But this guy's really valuable. Of course, he had the touchdown right before halftime on the reception. 
So Zamir White's going to get a lot more snaps. And the guy they call Zeus is in there right now. Yeah, and Brown and Davidson not in the game on a key drive. It seems, feels like a field goal is going to be the end of it for Walker. There's the end around on the play of Kiaris Jackson. Good speed and a good first down run. They'll move the chains again. Well designed play and runs sure beautifully. Was. And a great block off the edge that time by Andre Tom. Andrew Tom is number 71. He held his block for about four seconds on that reverse. And Big Derek Brown was in. George is loving what's going on here. They can use the clock. It's down under three and a half. They're in field goal range already. And they've got a two touchdown lead. They've run it six times. They'll run it again. And he gets inside the 30, taking Daniel Thomas with it. Watch Andrew Thomas here, the left tackle, how long he holds his block on this play. Comes out to the second level, engages with the linebackers of Kobe McClain, number 35, and holds that block the whole way. Consider one of the best left tackles in college football. Showing you why there. Yeah, number three and number five are in, and they got to play. They have to get a stop here. A tackle for a loss would be huge for Auburn right here. Second down and five for Georgia. James Cook, who I just mentioned earlier, in the lineup at tailback. He'll get the carry, and he's met at the line of scrimmage by Derek Brown and KJ Britt. Right in the middle of it. Takes on Solomon Kenley, throws him away, he just threw him away. He just one-armed a 335-pound guard. I, almost want, I, I want to circle it for <laughs> one more time. Just after even this play, oh my goodness. Keep your eye on this guy right here. Just toss away a 320 pound Throw him away and make the tackle. What a play. Third down and four, Georgia. Fromm finally set the throw one on this series. Completes it to Robertson. First down inside the 20. Interesting. Robertson's coming across to pick on the play. There's no one to pick, so he just continues on. Watch. Pick, pick. Nope. Okay, look for the ball. And he gets right through the... On that play, Christian Tuck actually ran into the umpire on the play. And as he was well. looking at him like, hey, nice block. Exactly. First down, Georgia. Eight runs in that one pass. And if you're James Coley, offensive coordinator right here, I'm sure Kirby is telling James Coley, we've got three in our pocket. Make sure that what you call does not lose three points. First down at the 15. Five. Throwing back shoulder. Oh my goodness, did he catch that? Kiaris Jackson, touchdown Georgia. Wow. Well, there was two defenders back there, Smoke Monday and Roger McCreary. Is he in? Oh, I don't think so. Where's the ball at that point? Yeah, but his toe was on the line. I now, think, here's a good look from I Pylon know. Cam. Watch his right toe. His left toe, rather. That's going to be out. Boy, those pylon cams see a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Ruling on the field for the previous play is a catch for a touchdown. This play is now in the video review. Some kind of grab. Yep, beautiful play. Well defended, better throw, great catch, except for one thing. Let's bring in Gene Stairtor. Gene, what do you think? I agree with you. I think after Jackson possesses the ball, the first thing to touch is the left foot, and it is landing in the white. If I were ruling on this, I would overturn it to an incomplete pass. So an all-important review going on. Steve Landis is our replay official. One more look to see when the ball goes in his hands. Right now and his foot is in the air so as Gene told you the first thing that touches is on the line
His body position, he was leaning backward, which would indicate he's going goal word, if you will. Whatever the call, it was an unbelievable effort yeah, it was. and catch. The other thought is, will the replay official say his left foot was grazing the grass before it touched? Remember, it was called a catch. He would have to overturn it. So his left toe is kind of skidding across the grass before it firmly comes After down. video review, it's an incomplete pass. The receiver was able to control the ball in the air, but first stepped out of bounds. The ball will be placed back to the previous spot, the 15-yard line, where it'll be second and 10. It was close, but I think this is the right call. Well, we saw, do you see his toe just graze and then down? So you kind of saw Kiaris Jackson next to Jake Fromm nodding his head as if to say, well, let's just go get the next one. <laughs> it was well executed, I'll say that. 11th play of the drive coming up. Bulldogs second down at 10. Auburn fans trying to give their defense some life to at least force a field goal. So we've only got 16 minutes of regulation left to play. Jake Fromm trying to be heard. DeAndre Swift has to get the last word from his quarterback. Auburn's going to bring the heat. Here they come. From lofts it to the corner. And this one's knocked away. Nice play by Roger McCreary. Well, you could see what the veteran Jake Fromm was doing there and why he's only been six times this Number year. one of the defense. The penalties have to distance their goal line. Automatic first down. So a huge penalty on Auburn just when they had Georgia at third and ten. And that'll upset your stomach if you're the head coach. Okay, big cat right in oh, front of him. Oh, it was the second move. And then he move. throws on him, yes. Or then he dives on him. He felt he was being held on the play by Charlie Werner. Number 89, and he lost his cool. First and goal. DeAndre Swift. His spin moves didn't work that time. Smoke Monday. Smoked him. Holy cow. The sophomore playing behind Daniel Thomas and Jeremiah Vinson, the two seniors. He'll be playing safety next year. And watch, oh, man. DeAndre Swift just hit 100 yards on the day, and he hit Smoke Monday on a Saturday. <laughs> Holy cow. No Sean Moreno, the last guy to have two straight 100 pluses against Auburn. Second and goal. Georgia, two tight end set. Swift behind Fromm. Play action. Jake lofts it to the corner. Touchdown, Eli Wolf. Much like the Florida completion that ended that game this one ends in a touchdown nice little design play this time Eli Wolf is going to engage watch him engage and then fall out allows the, the, the receivers to get past him and then falls out into the, into the play a little bit like Harrion's touchdown only from a different position right so two huge catches by that guy this year to end the Florida game and now to give Georgia a three touchdown lead. Rodrigo Blankenship for the point after. Up and perfect. And it's going to be a long climb back for the Tigers of Auburn with 13 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Georgia just capped an 88-yard drive in 13 plays with Jake Fromm's third touchdown pass of the day. Uh, 21 to nothing. Gary, when you've got 170 yards of total offense, which is what Auburn's at right now, right. this is going to be a struggle. Yeah, and, and I really go back that they had a couple of opportunities. You don't have that many. The Bo Nix fumble and the ill-timed timeout by Gus to get one more 30 seconds in the half. See if Jamie knows more on uh, Harrion's injury. Well, when Georgia gets the ball back, they will have running back Brian Harrion available to them. He was in the tent for a while. He had that left ankle taped back up, but he's making cuts on the sideline like he's ready to go. Young ligaments. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still be in the tent on Wednesday, but Brian uh, Harry's going to be okay. That's good news. Bo Nix, three for his last eight for seven yards. He's got to warm up. 
or Auburn is going to fall to seven and three. Still a lot of football left though. Fourth quarter. Maybe got two. For many years of playing in Detroit, taking a knee at halftime or running a play into the middle at the end of the quarter is bad strategy. And thus you heard a little bit of booing in the background. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the end of three. Something by three touchdowns. And a second down and nine from the 26 to open quarter number three. Empty backfield for Bo Nix. Nix throws out on the flat, compete to Seth Williams, another catch for him, and trying to fight for a first down, he might get there, and I think he's going to. So that's a good way to start the third quarter as we welcome you back to the booth in the short-term picture here. Auburn's got 15 minutes to try to do something about it, and Georgia's side of things in the big picture, they're looking pretty, they're looking good, pretty good, right? In the bigger picture than that? Right now, it hurts Oregon more than anyone. Uh -huh. This blowout right here on the home field by this Georgia team. Remember, Auburn beat Oregon on a neutral field. The biggest picture is this is really good news for the SEC, keeping two teams alive in the argument. And remember, Georgia came in and are right now ranked number four, and they're certainly going to solidify their spot. A lot of people thought maybe that was too high for them coming into the college football rankings this week. But this is going to be a pretty big feather in their helmet if they hold on to this thing in a tough place to play on the road. Well, speaking of holding on, they held Auburn in the third quarter to 25 yards total offense. That's not going to cut it. Williams shaking up after fighting for extra yardage on that previous play. Second down and seven. Again, only a couple of deep balls attempted today. And one was out of bounds when he threw it. This is going to be short, too, but it's going to be good enough for a first down to Will Hastings. And Seth Williams, the leading receiver today, with 11 catches for 83 yards. And there's where he was shaken up. And it looks like the left shoulder or arm is kind of dangled as he came to the sideline. Auburn trying to hustle up here, but now they slow things down. And again. Georgia playing very soft now. They're willing to concede these five eight-yard passes in front of them right now, at least till they get to the 50-yard line. And they're there now, but that's it to Schwartz right at the 50. And Devon Wilson made the stop. And Seth Williams heading into the tent. Clock winding down at 12.45. Got to be some urgency here for Auburn. Eli Stove, the motion man, has the ball just shaded on the dog side of midfield. Nicks, play fake, deep middle, got his man. And it's Shedrick Jackson. So they finally got a big play. And I think that's exactly the type of play that Gus was trying to map out for Jamie at halftime. Those play action passes where they could get some chunks on the play is what he was looking for. That was a 25 yard chunk there to the 25. And now Nick's trying to keep it himself and he found a little avenue. Got about nine. Yeah, and he's very smart when he runs the ball too. You know, without having a backup quarterback of, you know, any real stature, when he runs, he takes what he can get and then gets down, avoiding the big hits. And as you said, that time he kept it in his dominant hand and yes. tucked it high and tight. And now the first down run is Booby Whitlow to the 15 and maybe close to the 14. So Auburn's finally got their offense in gear here. Their last time they scored, though, was last year against Georgia. It's been 86 minutes of football, and they're still not in the end zone. And as everybody knows who follows Georgia, not one rushing touchdown allowed all year. And Gus Malzahn said, we don't care about that stat. We're Auburn. We expect to score. They haven't seen anybody as balanced as us this year. They're not on balance yet, but it's getting a little bit better. Stone on the other round. Georgia reads it well, and he's not going to get anything. Yeah, that Nicobe Dean is going to be a star. I'll tell you that right now. Inside the linebacker, runs like the wind. One of those big recruits, those recruiting classes. He's right here. Watch him read this and how fast he gets there. He and Nolan Smith, the two true freshmen, yes. two of the most highly talented linebackers in the country last year. And, and you can see why. Yep. They don't just give you five stars for nothing. Do they? <laughs> Second and nine at the 13. Hastings moves over. 
into the slot. Schwartz, the other slot man for Knicks as we're under 11 minutes and Harvard's got to keep hustling here as the fade to the corner and it's almost intercepted. It's intended for J.J. Wilson and Eric Stokes had a better play on the ball than the receiver did. Well, I, I tell you, the receiver stumbled coming out after the ball was in the air. You can see it. J.J. just says never was able to get into the play. J.J. Walker who actually played linebacker in the Pac-12, then H-back and now wide receiver and has not been able to make a difference in this game. Transferred from Arizona State. They expected him to maybe provide some big plays today. So far, not. Third and nine. Two down territory. Nix throws a little bit low and he couldn't keep his receiver running. Will Hastings makes the catch, but had to hit the turf to catch it. It's fourth down. Well, Will Hastings, before he was injured, was on his way to being a, a dominant player yeah. in this league. You know, he and Jared Stidham really were in sync, in sync together. And, you know, it just seems the way Hastings runs his route, he needs a, a rhythm-type thrower with him. Georgia is number one in the SEC and number two in the nation at scoring defense. They've pitched three shutouts this year already. They're trying to stop a fourth and five right here. Nick slants incomplete. Uh -oh. The flag comes in on Stokes. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes. And that time the big body of J.J. Wilson paid Pass interference. Number 27 in the defense. Penalty places the ball at the spot of the foul with automatic first down. 27 draped all over number 42. Yep. And it's first and goal over. No chance to influence the referees by coming up and waving your arms. The flag was already in the air. Remember, Georgia has not allowed a rushing touchdown this year. And it's a wildcat for Booby Whitlow. Takes the handoff to Schwartz. Wanted to do a jump pass uh, courtesy of uh, on Johnson of, uh, what was that, last two years ago. Prior to the snap, Georgia calls its first time out of the half. So they don't even get the attempt, and now that trick play is gone. I think they only had 10 people out there. Ruby Whitlow is going to try the carry on Johnson jump pass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he just jumped and came down with it. That's traveling. Exactly. <laughs> right, good timeout. From Jordan Hare Stadium here, number four, Georgia, number 12, Auburn. Bo Nix has had some opportunities that went awry. A really big fumble on this one. They gave the ball back to Georgia. And on the other side, a quarterback for the Dogs, Jake Fromm, having himself a day. Hasn't had to have a lot of yardage or a lot of attempts. But he's found three different guys, including Brian Harrion right before halftime from five yards out. That made it 14 to nothing. And then moments ago, Eli Wolf, the tight end, sneaks out. Puts it in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown number three for Fromm. And that's where we are at 21 to nothing with the Georgia Bulldogs now 10 minutes away from winning the SEC East in a trip to Atlanta to face, we'll see, LSU's in the driver's seat to be the other team to meet them. And this would be a huge win for Georgia and to keep their ranking at number four, if, if not better, in the college football playoff rankings. The last rushing touchdown was in the Sugar Bowl in a game that a lot of people think Georgia wasn't all that interested in <laughs> against Texas. Well, they were beaten last year in their bowl game, part of their 11-3 season. But right now, they're trying to go to 9-1, and, and they're trying to keep Auburn out of the end zone. Knicks, the throw out in the flat. It's still not a rushing touchdown, but it's an Auburn touchdown to Eli Stone. <laughs> Tigers finally on the board. Well, Eli Stove is lined up in the backfield on this. Comes into motion right here, goes across, and the Georgia defense cannot get there in time. A little bit of a pick. You see the pick on the other side of the play. I think it was Jackson, Shedrick Jackson, number 11, that got the pick on the play, but the ball was already in the air, and he was at the line of scrimmage. That would not be called on that play. Anders Carlson in for the point after. up and good. 
So finally in the fourth quarter, five minutes into the fourth quarter, Bo Nix gets his team a 12-play, 75-yard drive. Took him five minutes, nine seconds to get it, and they've only got ten minutes to get two more. So Gus has to look over at his defense and look at Kevin Steele and go, can you give me a three and out? Because yeah. that might be our only chance here. If Georgia can string together any kind of time-consuming drive, it could be too late. Yeah, they're not going to be in any hurry, are they? They nope. do anything. Andrews Carlson's got it teed up. Brian Herring and Zamir White are back deep, so Brian Herring okay, as Jamie told us. He's on the left there, number 35. Side kick. It goes far enough. Who's got it? Auburn. What's better than a three and out? That's better. James Moss. Crowder had a shot at it, number 30, I thought. It's a perfectly placed, oh, and look at that. He's on top of no, the ball. Exactly. It was almost on top of the ball, and he missed it on the play. There you see it slide under his right arm. Yes. And Auburn's got it back. Wow. Huge play. Here we go. Georgia was playing it as a regular kick. They had their guys back deep. And, uh, you know, it, it took Anders Carlson so long to tee that ball up. I had in my mind, boy, he's, he's really working it here to put that baby down the way he wanted it. And, and he yes. did it perfectly. And just kind of like overshot it on the recovery by Georgia on the play. Now they're going to review to see if it was touched. Is that what they're going to do? See if it was touched by before somebody before went, 10 yards. Yeah, before it went 10 yards. Okay, so everybody's still out of the way there. I think he whiffed on it. I he, think he would have touched oh, it. Oh, well, there's a touch. There's a Is couple it, fingers, but... All right, so let's go back to see. I think that's past the 10-yard line. That, that's now. already passed. And then the possession comes under there someplace. Again, if it's touched by a couple of fingers, it would be right there, and it's yeah, already gone 12 passed. yards. Yep. I think that was Eli Stove that got a hand on it. The wide receiver kind of pinned it, and then the mayhem ensued. Was, I don't know if it's reviewable whether Auburn was offside before the kick as well. I don't know if that's reviewable. Let's go back to see. After video review, prior to the ball going 10 yards, number five of the kicking team illegally blocks his opponent. This is a illegal block, five yards of the kicking team. Five yard penalty will be enforced with 35 yard line will re-kick from the 30. Okay, that well, we weren't looking for. Anthony Schwartz is the fastest man in the field. And on this play, he too was fast. too fast. Yeah. Oh, I, I did not have any idea, but watch Swartz engage. The ball has not gone 10 yards, and that... Gene Steratore is with us, Gene. Didn't even know it was reviewable. That is exactly right, and it is reviewable. A great job by replay. The ball is only 9 yards when that block occurs, and by rule, that is a foul. It's a really good job by the replay officials to get this one right, guys. And the reason Anthony Schwartz is there is because he's fast. But watch it. I thought maybe he was offsides. No, but he's so fast. Actually, three yards in front of anybody, and he engages there. Ball's not 10 yards. And boy, we thought we were looking at everything. We were looking at <laughs> fingernails and fingers and who recovered it. And there's a wide receiver who's too quick for his own business yep. right there. And so they have to re-kick it. They'll back it up to the 30. And interesting, Georgia does not go onside kick return again, though. Now they're expecting Auburn again to kick away. Let's see if they do. The last one, as far as the kicker, it was perfect for Carlson. This time he's going to rip it. And caught in the end.
end zone, and Brian Harrigan hesitates and then decides to bring it out and probably shouldn't have as he got out around the 19-yard line. Let's take a look at the GMC game changer today. Here's a dude that can change a game for you. You got it. We started in the open with Derrick Brown as being a difference maker, and we've seen all day why. He not only has quickness, he has brute strength throwing around offensive linemen and just about everything he does, his effort, the whole game is the same. I mean, he plays like that in game one of the year to this game. He has played with that type of intensity. He's got a little boy, young son. He says, when I come out to play football, I think of this as my job every day. I'm just interning until I actually get the job. Well, he's going to have a job in the NFL next year, and uh, he'll be well paid for it. DeAndre Swift. Two and a half, maybe. There's uh, Derek and his little boy, Kai. Jamie's got more. Well, the Auburn coaching staff made three visits to Derek Brown's home over the summer just to check with him on where he was at. It was after last season on returning to Auburn. And it was his father, Jim, who made the biggest impact. Coaches told me that when he speaks, you listen. And he told Derek, you finish what you started. And that's why he came back to Auburn. Well, he is some kind of finisher, I'll tell you. Second down and eight. Demetrius Robertson going to try that end around again. He's looking for a block. Couldn't get it. Nice play defensively by Javaris Davis again. Yeah, I thought Nick Coe did a good job, too, on the edge, forcing him just a little wider. And then Thomas comes up and cleans it up. One of the things that this defense, especially Kevin Steele defense, has said those edge guys have to be able to make that running back go a little wider or just stutter a bit so that our safeties can make the play. Second, uh, third down and nine, I should say. This would be a big stop for uh, the Tigers. Georgia three wide receivers and the tight end Werner down at the bottom of your screen. Jake Fromm. Here comes the heat. Jake's going to go deep. And out of bounds. And George Pickens was going to be the intended receiver. Jake could feel that pass rush. He knew he could not be sacked in this play. He had to get rid of it. He threw it out of bounds. Not a great pass. But I'll tell you, on that play, they went again. And number 23 just didn't keep it on the field for Pickens. Giving him any chance for the catch. Georgia's seventh three and out today. <laughs> Look, wow. You name that, you go there. They're ahead by two touchdowns. How's that work? Well, this is going to get interesting now because from now on, it's four down territory for Auburn. And a whistle. And a false start on Georgia. False start on 41 offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. And another special teams penalty against Georgia. Yeah, and, and for the first time, maybe since early in the game, it feels like the crowd's back in the game. Yep. But time is of the essence if you're an Auburn Tiger fan. It's 8.25 all that's left. Camarda, who's hit a couple of beauties today. This one's going to flutter down to the 30-yard line to Tut. And Tut gets about 12 on the return. So good field position again for Auburn. With 8 minutes, 11 seconds remaining in regulation, and they trail. In the first half of today's game at Mississippi State, Alabama has not made an official announcement on the injury, which Coach Nick Saban said after the game was a, quote, freak thing that you seldom see. Indeed. Guys, back to you. Boy, that's a tough one for all of college football. Two of one of our favorite guys to visit with. Having a good, great game and another great season, and it is over. Yeah, it's basically been the story of college football for two years. Yep. Bo Nix, his team trailing by two touchdowns. Down the middle is Seth Williams, his favorite target. And it's down to the 35. Well, I'll tell you, since Georgia has started playing zone defense and allowed a little space, it has not worked. they got to go back to man-to-man -to -man coverage. Pick up a 24. And looking for more of the side armor out to Williams again. He broke a tackle. Seth Williams down to the 20. And another Auburn first down. Well, and Eric Stokes, if he doesn't grab the toe of Seth Williams, it's a touchdown. Comes out, blocked, but watch this. The last second he blows it. Maybe better man tackled, but it was in space. Now it's out to Schwartz in the flat. 
And Schwartz is to the 10. Auburn's got it working here with seven and a half to go. Second down in the yard. At the 10-yard line. Stack receivers both ways, but the give is to Whitlow. Waits for his blocking. Got it down first and goal. The first down play was huge. This time, Prince Tagawanogo comes around the corner and just levels it. The left tackle comes around for the counter OT and opens it up. Tigers at the Georgia 2. Nix keeps it. Dives. Touchdown, Harvard. Here we go. These games never end easy, do they? Five minutes ago, it looked like this thing was over. It's far from. It's a zone keep. He keeps it. He dives across. Was his knee down before he got across? Did not get a clean look on that one. And they're going to take their time, the officials, before they spot the ball. They want to put more the ball low. through the plane of the goal line prior to any body part other than his hand or foot touching the ground. This play is now under video review. I think the ball is already over the goal line when his left knee hits right, right about there. Not yet. Not yet. I there think the it right is. there is it. Yep, that's a touchdown. That'll be a touchdown. And they have scored two of them in the last three minutes. For Bo Nix, it'll be his sixth. Rushing touchdown of the year, none bigger maybe than that one. Yeah, and Bo Nix now is 27 for 41. You know what's also interesting? Only one sack all game. They've been sacked 23 times, and that sack was on like a safety blitz. Remember yeah. coming yep. from the edge? After video review, the ruling on the field of a touchdown is confirmed. Well, we've seen a lot of interesting things in this stadium over the years. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> interesting is not even half of it. Yes. So even until there's one second to go in the game, the game ain't over here. That's right. Carlson in for an all-important point after. Auburn takes 68 seconds to go 57 yards in five plays. Georgia gives up remaining in regulation. It's 21 to 14. You know, we talked about how much Georgia defense substitutes, but the fact that you mentioned before that Auburn has seven three and outs against Georgia means that their defense has only faced 56 plays. So they're fresh here for the end. Carlson will kick. Deep. And Herring will let it go. Georgia will. And I think that was our scholar athlete that hit the dust there. So he's <laughs> not, not a, always smart. Not smart. He's, he's book smart. He's book smart. Here we go. Well, nobody has faced more pressurized situations in college football than number 11 for Georgia. Comes up that let his lineman know where everybody is. Fine. Down the middle, and Eli Wolf, the intended receiver, it went out of his hands. Pretty good coverage by Jeremiah Benson. Good protection. You know it's going to be man-to-man -man coverage. Good spot. Perfect throw. Drop ball. Should have had it. Yeah, absolutely. Tried to catch it with his chest instead of his hands that time. Or in Wolf's case, pause. Second and ten, and with every snap, this place is going to get louder. Absolutely. Unless Jake Fromm can quiet him. Corner blitz. Fromm's going to keep it. No game. That was a great call by Kevin Steele. The corner blitz forced the give on the play. It was a zone read, but there's nothing he could do. Coming right at him off the slot. An aggressive defensive call coming right at his face when he's trying to run, and he had to get, keep it. He could not hand the ball off. If Georgia doesn't get this first down, Auburn is going to force a punt. They're going to get the ball back, and they're only going to lose about a minute of time off the clock. Third and ten.
They're coming again from late throw, incomplete, broken up by McCreary. Well, McCreary was the story of the first end of the first half, but in the second half, he has made some plays. Again, coming off the edge, Big Cat Bryant was coming in there, the ball was behind, and the official was not going to help out. Big Cat Bryant forces the kind of the spot throw, could not step into it, and McCreary was able to catch up to the throw. McCreary looked like he might have been shaken up on the play as well, but Camarda now with a punt, and this one is not a very good one, although it's going to take a Georgia roll down around the 27 or 28 yard line. So there's only a minute and what four seconds that came off the clock in the exchange back to the Auburn offense. Sometimes all you need is a good courtroom drama. The new All Rise Monday at 9, 8 Central on CBS. Well, we gave the bad news at the end of the third quarter when Auburn only had 25 yards in the third quarter. But in the fourth quarter, they've got 124 yards already and counting. Two touchdowns in a three-minute span. They got it back. Full complement of timeouts. Six minutes remaining. That guy thought it was over a long time ago. And I don't know what the uh, holdup is exactly. John McDade had a little chat on the Auburn sideline. Here we go. Auburn's got their heavy both tackles to the one side of the field. From the 28, Bonix fires complete Schwartz. They wrap him up, but he gets nine yards. DJ Daniel made the tackle. Nice comeback route. No back shoulder there. Run him off and come back and catch it. Second and short. They'll keep it on the ground to Whitlow. And he's got a big run out to the 45. Another Auburn first down. Well, I'll tell you, DJ Daniel was lucky he got a hand on his foot there. Or Whitlow would be out for another 10 yards. The Georgia defense really reeling right now. They started out playing soft zone. It seems like they cannot get back in sync. And Bo Nix is feeling it. He sure is. By himself in the backfield until Schwartz comes across. And across again. They fake it to him. Nix loads it and goes back to Schwartz on the sideline. And Schwartz gets up positive yardage again. Probably that is seven or eight more. Great awareness. Awareness from Nix on that one. He's going to go downfield for the big play, but he knew he had Schwartz who came in with the fake motion as a safety valve, but he went to him at the last second. Gus Malzahn told us of Bo Nix. He doesn't think anymore. He reacts, and he's reacting perfectly right now. Pick up of eight. Look at what he's done this half. In Georgia territory. Drop ball on the snap. Still loose. And I think Whitlow got on top of it. Although Georgia's saying they've got it. I don't know if Bo took his eye off that. It was a bad snap. And it's Auburn ball. And it goes from second and two now to third and medium. It was low. Yeah, it was a little bit of a knuckleball, wasn't it? Yeah. And Whitlow kicked it forward about three times before he jumped on it. Got all three timeouts. What does he do if he doesn't pick this up? Do they give the ball back to Georgia? They're down at five. Biggest play of the day so far. Again, the snap was a little off. Nix backpedals, throws, incomplete. Closest man was Hastings, but Richard LeCount was actually closer to the football. And what, and what do you do now? Good blocking that time. Picking up the blitz by Booby Whitlow. Picks up the blitz. Whitlow does a nice job of giving Bo time, but... Nowhere really to throw. I told you the zone is done. Georgia's not going to play any more zone. Three timeouts left, and he's going for it on fourth down here. I'm surprised. They're three out of seven to the, uh, this point of the season. And he, and he has. Here we go. 
Fourth and five. Georgia just brings four. Knicks wanted to get rid of it in a hurry. Now he's going to run and he's going to get it. First down. This has shades of that Oregon game, the first game of the year, when Knicks made those scrambles on that last drive. He was four for six in a couple big runs. He had that huge fourth down run against Oregon to get the first down before the throw to Seth Williams. On fourth and five, he got eight on the scramble. First down at the Georgia 42. Georgia going to bring a blitz now. Throws complete to Hastings inside the 40. And we're inside four minutes in regulation. This game was 21 to nothing if you're just joining us. And, and Georgia has brought pressure three, four, five times and not been able to get a free man through. That's good protection up front. Auburn showed hurry up and then takes its time for the second and seven. Knicks deep on the sideline. Back shoulder to Williams. Did he catch it? He did. Well, DJ Daniel was on the coverage right there. Back shoulder. Can't tell if his toes were down there. Oh, yeah. It's going backwards. Was his heel on the line, but his left toe was on the ground. Really on the previous play is a catch at the sideline for a first down. This play is now under video review. I don't know if he was juggling it as well. There's like two or three things to look at here. Remember, going backwards, you have to get the full foot in. His right heel hits the line. And the ball, is, is it moving? A little bit. He still controls it. I'm wondering if the right heel is not going to be the call, though. This is so close. It would be his 15th catch of the day if it's good. The heel is still a little bit airborne, but it's yeah, hard but to it, tell at but what his, point. But his left, is his left foot down? The toe of his left, it looks like, yeah. <laughs> looks like his toe and heel were touching about the same time. Yes. Remember, it's called a catch on the field. That could be the overriding thing here. Gene Steratore is with us, Gene. This is really close, and you've hit on two of the elements that I'm really focusing on, too, and that is if Williams possesses this football and his left foot is down before that right heel touches out of bounds, then he's basically got one foot in bounds before that second foot comes out. It's the determination on possession there, and if the left foot is down prior to the right heel touching the white, and this is really, really tight. Yeah, we're scraping the turf on this. Is one. it enough to change? After the call? video review, it's an incomplete pass. The receiver was not yet controlling the ball when his foot first went out of bounds. Ball placed at the 39-yard line will be third down. For the game clock operator, please put 310, 310 on the game clock. To me, that's why you can't use it as a still frame. It's control. As Gene said, when you control the ball, the ruling was by the replay official that his right heel came down. It's not the toe. When you're going backwards, it's your heel. I totally agree, Gary. And what John McDade said, too, as well, is the ball was moving. So they did not deem that he had stuck that possession, and I agree with that as well. So when possession occurred, the heel then is out in the white, and I believe that is the reason why he overturned that yeah. to incomplete. Wow, how close. And now we got third and seven. <laughs> with 310 remaining in regulation. Nonetheless, Seth Williams has 13 catches for 121 yards so far. That would have been a 17-yard completion. Kirby running up and down that sideline to get his defense where he wants them. Where he wants it at the 39. Third and seven. Schwartz in motion. They've thrown to him out in the flat a couple times on this drive. Knicks, quarterback draw. Going to be short. 
Fourth down and two. Boy, he had, and that play too. Wide open. Anthony Schwartz coming underneath. Watch him come underneath right in the middle of the field. Had it. But as Brad said, the quarterback was running with it. Remember, they picked up a fourth and five earlier on this drive. Here's another one. Fourth down and two. He's going to do the quick huddle. And Huddle's only about two yards away from the line of scrimmage. Up they come. Nix is going to be under center. That's a rarity. He fakes it. Bootleg throws in the flat. In and out of the hands of Harold Joyner. Incomplete. Bad throw. He made all those great plays. And then he's got a layup and doesn't make the layup. So they got one fourth down. They didn't get that one. And depending on what Georgia can do on offense, that might seal it. But we still got 224 to watch. Joyner comes sliding out right into the flat, right out there with the fake. He's got a layup to him behind him, and it's for a running back, a tough catch for a running back. He gets on him fast, it's behind him, and can't make the play. Right over his shoulder. Yep. Remember, three timeouts left. Kirby didn't defend it, but they didn't throw it. And you can see the frustration. On the defense, now they're back out there to try to see if they can stop Georgia. Brian Harrion, who was shaken up earlier, is in the backfield behind Fromm. Everybody bunched in tight as far as receivers. And it's Harrion on the carry, and he didn't get anything. Might have gotten a yard. Yeah. When you win... Auburn knows you're going to run. It doesn't matter how big your offensive line is. Sometimes those guys up front and the safeties and the corners, just no space. Auburn takes a timeout at 219. Remember, Georgia can win the SEC East if they can win this last two minutes and 19 seconds. Florida did what they had to do today with a win in our first of our doubleheader on CBS with a win over Missouri. So they're 6-2, and two, and they are watching, you can bet. But Georgia, having won the head-to-head -head with Florida, if they can win today, they'll be going to Atlanta for the SEC title game. Coming up after our game, Adam, Kevin, and BJ will have scores and highlights on the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage. I wonder if Georgia can dial a, a run for Jake Trump. Not just one of those zone reads in the middle of the line, but something off the edge. There's that big defensive front that's been so stout against everybody, including Georgia today. Second down and nine. Um, and DeAndre Swift in the backfield. That's Robinson in motion. And it's DeAndre Swift. Falls forward for about four. And Auburn takes its second time out. With 2.16 remaining, the drama builds at Jordan Hare. Seems like every time it's a third down, and Georgia has had several third down situations where Auburn has held. Can they hold again? Well, and remember the other X factor in this situation against Florida, from through the ball to ice the game. That's right. Will they do it again? And that was to Eli Wolf in Jacksonville. Third and five. Throws in the flat to DeAndre Swift. Can he make anybody miss? No. Not that time. Javaris Davis. How many open field tackles has that guy made today? Yeah, but that was, he had triangulation working here. He had help inside, and he knew that all he had to do was stay outside, and Tut was inside to help. But Georgia's got to give it up again with 2.10 remaining, and Auburn is out of timeouts. And I'm betting right now that uh, if there's a TV near that Chamberlain Smith the young female photographer from the Athletic Association of Georgia is going hey dogs hold on <laughs> injured uh, right before halftime she's from Ringgold Georgia and uh, Chamberlain again we hope you're okay and uh, for your family and friends that are watching Jamie it sounds like Chamberlain is at the hospital. She's awake. She's receiving tests. Her sister posted to social media that she appreciates all the prayers, and uh, she is undergoing further evaluation. Well, she did her job, right? We always hear the coach, do your job. That's right. That's Everybody's trying to do that right now, including well, Camarda. 
And how about this Auburn defense? That's their ninth three and out in the football game to give them a chance. Kamara, high hanging kick is going to sail out of bounds. Let's see where they spot this thing. It's coming up. It's coming up past the 25 somewhere. And they're still walking it off. 31 yard line, it looks oh, like. Oh, no, no, no. He's going to move it back. The referee put his hand down, and the field judge didn't see him. He kept moving. They're going to move it back. And they are. Good job by the referee. So they go back to about the 26 or 7. Yes. He put his hand down, and the field judge couldn't see him. So he kept walking towards the 30. I think John McDade's had it with somebody on that Auburn sideline. <laughs> it's not Gus. I think it's one of the assistants. But anyway, here we go. Auburn's got it again. 2.03 to go. Mix. Last pass was a bad one. This one's uh, not very good either. Over Hastings' hands. Maybe a taller receiver would have had it. I don't know. Yeah, that was a tough one for anybody. I actually thought Wyatt got in his vision that time. Number, excuse, yes, Devontae Wyatt, number 95. He had to get it over the outstretched arms. Remember, Auburn's out of timeouts. First downs will stop the clock momentarily. And getting out of bounds will do likewise. We're under two minutes. Mix, it was a low snap from center. Again, he's in trouble. Got away from one man. Three Georgia Bulldogs given chase. He throws a completion. A dope out of bounds. Ruby Whitlow caught it, but he was that, out of bounds. That was a big escape by Nix that time. Spins away from Olajari on the play. And watch the escape. Almost got face masked. Turned around and hit Whitlow, but Whitlow's foot was out of bounds when he made the catch. He had one sack in the game, and that was from a blitz look. The front four for Georgia has not been able to come up with a sack in the game. They try to create havoc plays is what Kirby Smart calls them, and they haven't had many. Third and ten. Nix over the middle, completes it. Nope. nope, dropped it. Seth Williams had it in his hands, and it's fourth down. Boy, that, that secondary going to this ball when it was completed, they went right for the ball. And that's not going to count as a havoc play, but it should because LeCount and Stevenson just freed up that ball. Actually, broken up passes do count. Oh, do they really? Yeah, they do. Oh, wow, that was beautiful. Tyreek Stevenson, Richard LeCount. Here we go. Fourth down. And Georgia stops this. It's ball game. Set to fire again, or will he? He's not going to get it off. He's sacked that time by Trayvon Walker. They finally get home, and their coach hits the turf in celebration on the sideline. We kept waiting for that front four to make a play. This time they land a three, but they stumped it. Brought one linebacker on the play, and Walker finally gets there. Three down linemen, but watch the stunt at the end. From the outside, Adam Anderson comes in to make it four, and then the sack from the backside. Who figures that a freshman who's never even been to Jordan-Hare Stadium would end the game for Georgia? Hey, oh, by the way, one of those big recruits, another five-star true freshman to end it. Jake Fromm will take a knee. Jake Fromm's about to be three and one in his career against the Auburn Tigers and as the clock ticks down it'll be their third consecutive trip to Atlanta how about that yep and they'll stay at number four too Bo Nix did everything he could 30 out of 50 for 245 yards I know the one he'd like to have back I, I know exactly what he's thinking yep he said to us, when you watch film, sometimes you watch too much and you can get too down on yeah, yourself. And, there's always a play. I yeah. could have done this. I could have done that. Bo, don't worry about it. There'll be many more. But we all battle that one extra play we could have done. He was magnificent this second half, wasn't he? He was. And there's the coach. And there's how happy he was. <laughs> Kirby Smart. 
I mean, it looks like it was going to be the end of the third quarter. It looks like it's going to be a cakewalk, and all of a sudden you're hanging on for dear life. I got a feeling Chamberlain Smith's going to get a game ball from Georgia. She did her job. As Gary said, Georgia did its job. Big win as the Dogs hold on to win 21 to 14. And they are the SEC East champions again. And a third straight trip to Atlanta to play for all the SEC marbles. So they got one more SEC obstacle in their way. That's next week. And they're 